say that uh, just before I came here tonight, I got an email from uh, Chris Corey. The site plan has all been approved. All I've got to make one little change, so we're good to go there. And he has approved us to go on to the next stage, which is getting the architect to draw the interior. Um, I don't think we're going to see any problems with that at all. The building itself, I'm, I'm sure you've all been in that building at one time or another. But uh, the building is conducive exactly to what I want to do on the inside. Uh, very open, it's just a matter of uh, making the uh, partitions, things of that nature. So uh, we've got a couple things to take care of. I already talked with Jessica. We're going to come up. Those are two parcels there, if you're not familiar with that. There's a 38-foot parcel that goes right from the sidewalk right back to the ice bowl of ice cream shop. That's one parcel, and then the building sits on one parcel. And they've requested that we combine those. So uh, Nick and I talked about it. Of course, Nick's going to have to find a say on everything, but we don't see a problem with that. I mean, there's no reason that couldn't happen. Uh, we also talked about, I talked with Chris about, I don't like the handicap spot that's out in front because it's not very conducive to handicap people. I mean, you park at the curb, you have to walk all the way down to the sidewalk and come in. And he has told me that if we will put a handicap spot at our front door of that building, they would allow that one to come out and be another open parking spot. So uh, that's just kind of a general overall of what we just wanted everybody to kind of know who everybody's talking to. I'm sure I'll be talking with you guys. I've talked with Josh a little bit and uh, if you got any questions, I'd be glad to try and answer them for you if there's any time left. There is. So, you do know that Main Street, they all, all tore up from Grand Ole all the way to Party, right? That's going to Say that again. All summer, we're going to be pulling up that road, Main Street. North Main? Yep. Okay. So, it might be, hopefully it doesn't, I, I welcome you to be here for the Village of Waterville, but we're, we're going to be tearing up that road to repair under the understructure on that road. So you're doing all uh, uh, understructure and repavement and all of that? That's correct. Yeah. And curbs and gutters and yeah. everything? And the curb will go all the way up to... That, that, that would be a good time to change that handicap spot. Yeah, around. we can do that too, but you're, you're gonna have some construction. So what is your time frame? Has, has your contractor been able to give you any kind of time frame? When the kids get out of school, it's gotta be done before the kids go back to school. So that's what, September? 
Yes. They go back? I don't see a problem with that, do you, Nick? No problem with that. As long as we can have access to get pickups in and out to do contractor work, stuff like that, I don't see a problem with that. When do you think you'd have it open? Uh, if, <laughs> if everything goes according to plan, I would like to have it by January 1st. Oh, well, this is what uh, Of course, you know, this process has got to go forward. I don't know what we're going to run into there. And then I have to, I can't apply for my state licensing until the building has been inspected and I get an occupancy permit for it. Then I can apply to the state for my inspection from the uh, Mortuary Science Division. So, yeah, I don't see a problem with that, Brad. That, that should work out better, right? Yeah, that would be the first week of June to the third week of August. In school. Yeah. And again, there'll be more parallel parking down along that street past the school. So that. Yeah, that's well, one other thing parking. I didn't mention was Chris approved as long as we follow his plan. When you pull in, not to the, to the driveway that goes in next to the building, not the one that's over by the party store, he has approved us to put in five angle parking spots along the building as long as we designate that driveway one way. So you can come in and park, but then you gotta back up and go out the other way. And we don't have any problem with that either. So everything's been very positive. Uh, Chris Corey is great, I know I've never met him, but what a great guy he is. I mean, he's, he's had to put up with me, so he's all right. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. So yeah, any questions we got? Our supervisor Shane and, and myself, but we're, we'd be more than glad to have you aboard. Okay. Or we just wanted to make sure you knew it's going to be like the worst thing you could think of. It's going to be tore up. I mean, we're going to. But it's going to be nice. It's going to be when we open. Yeah, that's right. That's true. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Yep. Any way we can help. Hey, you bet. Yeah, that'd be nice. Get that in writing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi, Brad. So that means that the Main Street project is for sure going to happen this year? That's correct. Okay. We've been sitting hoping. Oh, so have we. Yes. No, it's, it's all in the... When, do you know when they're supposed to start? It's, they're, they're anxious to start as soon as the kids get out of school. And they okay. are going to... They said, be ready. It's going to be... Are you removing sidewalks and whatnot down that street? I don't have the plans right in front of me, but I do know it's going to be all restructured. And where the sidewalks will be, I think they can stay there, but we're going to pull back soil back so there'll be parallel parking all the way to Guy Dutton Street. I did see that. And that'd be only on the east side. I didn't see anything on the west side. But but it, it will be portion of it would be curb and gutter. I know it would be all the way up past the school. Have curb and gutter, so. yep. But they're going to go past that. So when we had the trees removed and they went over into the soil, that's where we're going to have more roads, so side parking for the road. And then we'll, if the sidewalks are damaged, we'll definitely want to make sure that they're part of the program so they can, I don't want to put all back together and we don't have the sidewalks walkable. So. And we got, we had uh, Alan Boyer give us more information on, because we only got, we're just short of Party Road where we got to tear everything all apart under the ground, but we're still going to resurface all the way to Party Road on Main Street. Oh, okay. And they will go all the way to Party Road. Cool. This one, it'll be smooth. And just for information, I've talked to the county and they're waiting on uh, Leroy Township they're trying to do Part E Road um, from Weatherville Road to the village limits. And he said he's hoping that he can get the village on board to do the rest of Part E Road from the village limits to Gramer Road, too. Which is a bridge, correct? Mm -hmm. we, we don't own the bridge, Leary Township does, right? Uh, we own that bridge. That bridge, yeah. Okay. All the way from the village limit to Gramer, that's a pretty, pretty long stretch. But yeah, well, it, it, they're going to have to get us prices on that as far as I mean, but and they may just have to stop the village limits and then we can take on what do we get, you know, when we budget for it. But right. If that doesn't happen. There's a section in front of the DPW garage that's going to have to be cut out and replaced because yeah, we got to wear out right there. If I could just say yes, something, yes. then I'll get out of your hair. 
sometime in the next six to ten days, consumers are going to be running new gas lines into that building. Okay. So that'll all be done before you even start your project. So they, you won't be tearing up the street. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've said that for six months. Uh, have they? Well, they, they told Nick the other day. It's it's been, been, yeah. been a couple of days, but the, seriously, just a uh, couple of days is what they put it in. Yeah. So we're hoping. Okay. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Have a good day. You too. Any more questions over there? Any more questions? No, I had heard that that building was sold, but I just hadn't heard it was going to be a film. It's actually going to probably collaborate pretty well right there. I would think that would work pretty well. You can't go wrong with having a funeral home in your town. It brings in people, whether they want to come or not. All right. So, yes, we're pretty excited. We, we see anything from Alan Boyer, engineer, telling us that any of the guys aren't ready to be on board and the products there that we need to do the infrastructure underneath the, the road, all that is lined up, road up, ready for. I guess you'd call it the demolition of the road. Yeah. I would imagine we would start seeing them start staging stuff pretty soon, eh? Uh, they're going to wait until probably a week before. before they see. It's okay. not going to take them long to mobilize, get their stuff. When they stage it, they want to be here. So they want to be here. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's like a week. June is going to be like two weeks away. Yeah. When when does I thought school didn't get out to like June twenty fourth. I think it gets out the first Friday in June, so it's the yeah, sixth. Yeah, oh. the first week yeah. in June. Okay. Week, I think the sixth. Couple weeks. I think it yeah. is the sixth. Yeah. First yeah. week in June. Sorry. Well, yeah, it's we probably second. a week or so. We it's, probably it's start June second. Second. And they can stage it all where the old school buses were. All that's going to be where they're going to put the product, the the, the pipes and. Yeah, the so probably there to one of the reasons why they probably want to wait. Yeah. Because I mean. The way like parents pick up kids right there, and then also obviously there's a ton of kids running around there. Or climbing on it. Yeah, having a bunch of stuff there probably would be great. Friday's the last day for the seniors. Next week's actually graduation. Okay. Did the council have? Yeah, go ahead. I got quite a few questions. Okay. So um, if I can just answer, ask them. Sure. And then you can answer them. Uh, who is the village law enforcement advocate? Jim Wright is our ordinance coordinator. No, 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 no. Law enforcement advocate. He's the person that deals with the sheriff's department for coverages, for officers not being here, for assigning officers to the village. They work with the sheriff's department about that. Well, the council and myself, we voted on the sheriff's department to have the deputy here. Right, I understand that. But in order for the deputy to not be here, he has to discuss it with the sheriff's higher command and the village law enforcement advocate. It's in the amendment to the contract that the sheriff signed, that you signed, that, you know, did that even go through corporate counsel, that contract? Well, myself and the sheriff, I take it that he does his job the way he's supposed to, and he delegates the deputy to be here. Okay, every time the deputy is not here, he's supposed to contact the village clerk. That's also in the amendment to the contract. So this contract with the sheriff's department in Ingham County, it also says if the guy's not assigned here, which we got one for 40 hours, when he's not, then they have the guy that's out on the roads if there's something that goes on to the someone room. to replace him here that's correct but okay. he's not actually sitting here on our premises like we had for the 80 hours the other guy that's, no because they cut that down to 40. that's correct but that means that they still monitor the village of Weberville periodically with their traffic control deputy right and, and i have a problem with that well I'm, um we, according to the deputy now he's not here but according to his sheets that he's turning in to the village clerk, he was here for 133.6 hours for the month of January. Now my math says, you know, 40 hours a week for the month is 160 hours. Mm -hmm. 
So doing the math on how much we're paying them, that works out to $78.62 per man hour. You're not putting in there Deputy Matt Wilson. He took the other man hours. Because we didn't lose that. How come we don't have his sheet of the time he was here? We didn't have his sheet, but Deputy Matt Wilson was here and he didn't leave here until April. He was here in March. So you don't have his hours, because no matter what, each week they give us 40 hours. Well, it, I, I find it just hard to believe. I mean, the only time she, I see was Deputy Hagerman. Right. You know, time yeah. sheet. On it, for the month of January, he says that for foot and bike patrol, he spent 33.3 .3 hours. The average daytime temperature in Weberville was 22 degrees. Do you think he's riding a bicycle or walking a beat? I don't know where you got your information from. I, <laughs> the bicycle's been hung up. <laughs> On his time sheets, he's turning in. For the month of January, he's got 33 hours for bicycle and beat patrol. It's probably at the school where he's on foot. No, he's got a separate thing for school contact. Like I say, January, he's down for 133 hours. February, he's down for 105 hours. Yeah. March, he's down for 100 hours. And, you know, if there's supposed to be another deputy that's here, I'd like to see the amount of time that he's actually here. Just like Deputy Hagerman is doing. So, with the... I know that they... they walk around town, if they park the car, they, they walk in and out of the buildings, but there's no, you and I both know there's no bicycle riding. He's got it down as bicycle patrol. And he wasn't here, so we could answer, you know, answer in, the question. In February, he's got it down for just over 24 and a half hours of riding his bicycle in town. In, in what? February, the month of February where the average daytime temperature was 24 degrees. You know, I don't see any transparency or accountability on that, especially seeing how you're telling me there's another deputy here, but I don't see any proof of that. You, you don't remember Deputy Matt Wilson? Oh, I remember him. I haven't seen him in... Right, when he retired. Yeah, he retired, and that was one of the problems we had. With and him. when did he retire? This year, last year? This year. This okay. year, like I'd say March was his last month. Yeah. I think he might I don't think he did anything in April. No. I think March was his last month. No, why in January, February, and March did we not see a report from him? We have reports. We get them when we have our meetings here. And every report that I get that I have gotten from the clerk was from Deputy Hagerman. You don't have Matt Wilson's because we we so that's that's all I've got to go with, Brad. Yeah, because you know Jamie Cooper and Matt is here. Yeah, well, those last few months that Matt was here, they just gave one summarized report. I don't, it didn't spell out who was making which call. So, what what would you like when we have the contract from the Indian County Sheriff's Department, which was eighty hours? You had two deputies here. They put their time in. We know that they don't ride bicycles unless the weather's correctly, so I don't know if that's a check mark where they put that in there, but as far as the hours that I see on the sheet is what they spend here. What the, the what only hours on the sheets that I see is what Deputy Hagerman turns in. Right. Do you have sheets from Matt? We should have sheets from Matt. Yes, we should. They don't. I asked for them. I asked for all of the Ingham County Sheriff's Department monthly reports. So the do. only reports I got was from Deputy Hagerman's. Okay. Well, they didn't get and they hours. were short on hours. You know, I'd like to see a little transparency of where my money's going. I mean, if, if that's all that's here, that's all I can go by, is the reports that you guys get from the Sheriff's Department. And according to the reports that you got, you know, through January, February, and March at $78 an hour, We've been overbilled over ten thousand dollars for the hours that we have had a deputy in the village. 
you know, according to the contract, from what I have read, it's not road patrols, it's village patrol. There's supposed to be a deputy in the village 40 hours a week. Not out and about on the road driving around. And you're just saying that, that didn't happen? According to all of the reports that have been turned in to the village clerk, that did not happen. Okay. The only reports that the village clerk has is from Deputy Hegerman. And you're saying that the other deputy was here. All I'm saying is prove it. I would like to see it on paper where he was here and what he did, just like Deputy Hegerman does. Deputy Hagerman has different um, things that he puts his time down on. You know, two hours here, hour and a half there. That's all I want to see is where this is going from. Okay. I'll get that information. That would be good. What's your next? That was, I was just wondering where all this money's going that all this apparently, money. apparently Wait a minute. not getting Now it's my turn. All this money? We had a no no don't interrupt me. Okay. We have a contract for 80 hours. That got discontinued to 40 hours. Right. Now I'll check out the 40 hours, but when you say all that money, you you're just you're just making stuff up at this point. No, so, no, no, you're interrupting me again. I didn't interrupt you. Okay. I did not interrupt you. So I'm telling you, 40 hours a week is what we get for a deputy sheriff because of Billy Water. I will get that paperwork and documentation for you. It will come to Mason. I will get a hold of Sheriff Scott with his word, and that's the end of it. But I'm telling you that the Am County Sheriff's Department is putting 40 hours in the village. And if that didn't happen, I'll get back to you. Other than that, I understand. Let me re-clarify this, all that money. According to the hours that Deputy Hagerman was here, documented hours. January, February, and March, there was $10,708.04 that went to the Sheriff's Department for man hours that we did not get. Because you don't have, evidently, you don't have Deputy Matt Wilson that still worked for us in the hours of January 2023 and February, and I think partial of March. But I'll get that paperwork. That'd be good. I'd like to see that factor. I will take care of that. And are you also concerned that if I'm hearing you correctly, I just want to make sure that you're wanting to know where the officer is at all times because you're concerned that he's not in the village? No. Okay. No. I just misunderstood. I apologize. The only thing that, that my concern was is the only deputy we have is, is Deputy Hagler. Correct. And he spells out on the sheet that he turns in every month where he was at and what he was doing. Now, if it was outside of the village limits, he'd write it down. Hey, I was outside the village limits. I was over here on this call doing this, you know, spent this much time on it. You know, he has how many hours he spent for school contact, uh, how many hours, you know, bike and foot patrol. He, he nails all that down. I would like to see that from everybody that's supposed to be a deputy and I yield my time. Sheriff Wigglesworth, when the guys, when they document, they go out of town to help me and, and leave the village limits, they have to make up them hours backwards. And how do they do that? By making adjustments because all of a sudden they, they weren't here that full time because they were addressed to help another deputy out on the highway or somewhere that wasn't in the village limits, and then that'd be made up. I didn't, I, I will check this out and I'll get more documentation, but I've not had a problem prior to this where I read and sat down and looked at it where if they go out on the highway and they're over by Williamson, not in the village limits, that they, they recredit it, they add more hours, they, they make sure we get, they make up the hours, is what they do. Can, can we get all that documented? I will. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Right. Is there any other people that would like to have anything to bring to the council? Again? Okay. I recommend the council.
we go into a public comment. Anybody got a so moved? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All in favor say aye. Okay. The senator. Everybody get a chance to look at the minutes of the council meeting, payables, investment report, revenue and expenditure, and balance sheet. Mm -hmm. If so, do I have a recommendation to approve or disapprove? To make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a second? Second. I do have a couple of questions. Okay. Um, Quill office heater, I assume I should say space heater. Yeah. Okay. Assume as much. Um, Detroit Edison traffic street lights for $25.85.09. I assume that's for the new traffic lights on Oak Street. Or sorry, street lights? Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. And then the plant brand IRS assist. Is there the nice one you had to the what? Sorry? The nice one you had to reprocess because we lost them. The IRS lost them or plant lost them? IRS lost them. IRS. I don't want copies on. Oh, yeah, we have to resend them. <laughs> oh, the IRS, are you looking at IRS assist? Yeah, so when there is help, we'll put that out for you now. That would be nice. Huh. So these three IRS payments are there. So they're ones that um, we finally got the IRS bill to pay the remainder from that. So, yeah. plant marine is charging seven thousand dollars to just to fix a paperwork issue. If you want to look at the um, invoice, it'll probably be more detailed. Okay. This is just coming to you the last summary. Right. So I mean, is that is this like a payment that spans like multiple months of work? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let me look at this. I'm just trying to understand how it's. Especially if they had copies, right? They're just going to resubmit the copies. Mm -hmm. Why would they charge us seven thousand to do that? Yeah, I Three IRS payments from Q2, 3, and 4 of 2021 that are just being made now. Right, because we finally got the notes back from the IRS because they got the 941 finally. Is that right? We have to wait for them to give us the, the remaining fees. Okay. Um, Is that when you brought up last time what we were waiting on for them? Mm -hmm. There's probably a few more that we're waiting on that I haven't gotten the list from. I remember you bringing it up, saying that you had been contacted and that you were just waiting. I believe you might have been, been here. I believe you weren't. She yeah. just had brought something up saying that she had been contacted, but she was waiting on um, like how much it was going to be. Okay. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure you weren't here. Right. I'm pretty sure. That makes sense. This is consultation about an IRS collections draft power of attorney to obtain and review IRS transcripts, draft IRS penalties, and even less. So, this has been an ongoing one, not just for one month. Does it say how many hours or anything? It also just seems odd that it's such an even 7,000. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that was just like a brief about when this was happening. And that's not how to do the time. Right. I thought that was in that council book. We might have already. Yeah. And then they charged us 3700 through the end of April. I mean, I like them. They've done an amazing so, job. Caitlin's been, been yeah. fantastic. She's been phenomenal. 
It's a rather expensive service. Yeah. Well, it also had a number that some of the um, St. Mary's leases bought it from. Mm -hmm. uh, we're already super ahead for audit. We're actually starting to have bid in a month ahead of time. Okay. So that's also part of why it's so high. Oh, so some of these fees are for. Yeah, it's a variety of different things, and they do help us with a significant amount of things. Oh, and there's no way we would be as far as we are. She's been out now. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no question the work is top notch. I, I just question the, the large amounts. It's, I suppose it is what it is at this point, as long as the issue is resolved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are the only questions I have on the consent agenda. Okay. Roll call, please. Shelby? Yes. Anthony? Yes. Shelby? Yes. Hitchcock? Yes. Okay. The police report, are making a chance for the police report. Mm -hmm. So these are, when I look at this, these are community policy hours, 23.9, office hours, 26.5, school track hours, 17.9, foot and bike patrol hours, foot or bike. 18.8 hours. Then out of that, physical arrest was one. We had one overtime hour. And I'm assuming you did see this like that or no? Yeah. Okay. So you don't think there was 40 hours here in this one right here on April? I haven't seen it. I haven't gotten April. You don't have April? I have January, February, March. Okay. This is, we're looking at April, so okay, yeah. When the minutes get published, you'll have April. Right. Yeah, I'm looking at April. You can come up here. And I can... I'm good. I'll get that. No, no, I'll get so. Yeah, it says one overtime hour. I don't see the property that. checks. So you get 15 on the fourth. 15 is doing property checks. Traffic stop is two. One, two, three, five. So you have three, eight. 10 traffic stops. Two, seven verbal warning. School, the school contacts, which that's where I told them to concentrate on when the school is still in session. I want to make sure that the deputy sheriff stays in contact with the school. I want the school to be safe. How many days are covered in that month? Just out of curiosity. In, so, in April? 4th through the 28th. 30. 4th through the 28th. That would be the 28th. He has time on every day? 13 days. No, thir 13 days. Yeah. yeah. January, February, March, they're averaging 13, 14 days. I believe. Now, you know, schools open more than that. No, I, I see what you're saying. I mean, there's a gap between April 7th and April 13th. That right. There's no reported activity. I think he was on he vacation. Was there was no reported activity yeah. and no hours. I think he was on vacation. Yeah, he was on vacation. For half the month? I think so. Yeah. He picks and chooses which days. So when when this so when this gentleman's not here, then there would be another gentleman. So if he's on vacation for a week, then Sheriff Scott Woodsworth would then assign another deputy. Come then there should be another one of those sheets then from that deputy. I don't think there was. There there was I, I didn't see that. Uh -huh. I, I, mean, I didn't see. Yeah, out, out, out and I did. I saw Al County, but I didn't see any active person no. here. I know there wasn't anyone from at the no. school no. No. from what I've heard. So I mean, I think gentleman is kind of right that like for that we should have been, you know, we should have a reduction of cost. Right. Yeah. Because you know, if he's gone for two weeks, and then right. you know there yeah. should be. Yeah, know, but but it wasn't in a row. Yeah. He might not be here Monday and Tuesday this week. He'll be here Thursday, Friday, Monday and Tuesday next week, and then you know Wednesday and Thursday he's not there. Well, yeah. part part of it is the schedule should be sporadic and unpredictable because we don't want people to be able to predict when he's here and not, so I, they can plan crimes around that. Totally I, I understand that, but they should at least be here. But every he, day of the week but he the month. stated in council last month that it's 
best for his schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will have you Those get the share work. schedule yeah. because all we're getting is hacking. So I got to get the share schedule when he has for the contract for the village of Well, and can, that's what I'll get you. Can can we get whatever deputy is here to fill one of those out? Whether whether it's Hagerman, whether he's not here for a day and another deputy shows up just for that day, let him fill one of those out so that we have documentation. Yes, he was here. We had coverage. This is what he did. Yeah, because it wouldn't be surprising me if we're getting. I, I would like to see 40 hours every week from the sheriff's department written down on a piece of paper. Okay. 160 hours a month. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not being logged properly that if we get an officer assigned to us who's not typically in Weberville, that they're logging their hours as in Weberville, even though they may be here. Sure. It wouldn't surprise. I would. I would request though talk to them is if they can give a total hours for the month rather than just it'd be nice to see just an hourly number at the bottom of this rather than have a manually add right because some of these are hours and some of these are numbers like they're not he's not checking either. properties for 15 hours he checks no. 15 properties 15 properties right well there's got to be somewhere that the hours are up here yeah. one two three four the, the Top four on the far right is the hours. Where he's got community policing yep. hours, office. And I have seen it where Deputy Van Wilson will show like one or two hours that, that spins off this and went outside Billy Weberville. I, I didn't see that here. Maybe he did. But when Deputy Van Wilson was here, and then we had Mel Seymour and Ron Ivinson, they'd show if they went out of the village limits to assist somebody else. Yeah, you know, Adding those up rough numbers, it's, it's a little less than 80 hours for the month, even if she was off for vacation for a week. That's that should be 160 hours. Should be 40, 40, right? Right. I mean, there's 24, 26, that's 50. So, 160. We, we pay them quarters, correct? Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I need the discount. I've seen that part of the discount of what we pay them, but do we? We haven't seen what was below the discount of not having enough man hours to do a deduction that way, correct? Right. Okay. I would All think right. there would be some way we could get some way of tracking for him being here, actually being inside the village. Well, with that said, Saturday, well, the, the dispatch should be able to have that. Yes. Because they have to obviously That's like saying. dispatch in. Yep. That they're, you know, that they're on duty and then out. out of it. So I would assume they would have, they should have that. I, I had the opportunity Saturday. There was a Brighton retired police officer and a Wixom that's not ready yet to be retired, and then there's a Howell one that's going to retire here shortly, and they're interested. If we're interested to be a village police, and I mentioned to them would it be something where they'd be interested in like be part of Hickman County and then address that way. They really didn't want to do that, but they would be they would come to see us and consider what we could come up with money-wise or a vehicle for the town of Waterville to be a police officer for the town of Waterville versus hiring Angle County. I think we need to look into that. But you'd have to have a, you know, I mean, I think you got uh, 236,000 to work with to do that. Then you'd have a police officer. You'd have two retired deputies with a police car. You'd have to have some type of, but I don't think that would be a big cost to buy, buy a used vehicle, a police vehicle, sure. honestly, equipment. We already have a police station. Yep. Can I have the car? You need, you need two cars. You need two cars? Yep. You're going to have the upkeep of the cars, you're going to have the uniforms, you're going to have the guns, you're going to have to keep them in good, you know, condition. They're going to have to have their insurance, you know, the liability car. insurance. It's well, the cost like, will get up there. Sounds like $78 an hour. Would, would there be a possibility of maybe even checking in to see if there's um, a Homeland Security grant or something like that? Mm -hmm. What? Because I, I know Homeland Security just throws money at the big departments. I know that for fact. Seen it. Big departments. So big departments. Yeah. Sheriff. Do you think sheriff? Or you think they would? Some of the village world could apply for for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
something that the village could check into, possibly apply directly to Homeland Security saying, hey, this is what we want to do. Can we get some help on this? Well, definitely it's all been changed when they went from 80 hours to 40. Oh, I understand that. And, and the outpouring of the money from the village to the Sheriff's Department got cut also. But like I said, I can't see where we're getting 160 hours a month. Oh, yeah. Even if, even if there's a... I can't see where we're getting every day. Right. Even if there's additional expenses to, to have two police officers as Village of Weberville police, even if it's in excess of the current 260000 for the 40-hour contract, you're doubling the amount of presence, so it's a matter of value at that point. Yeah, and then you go back to Danville doesn't have any police. Gotcha. Well, I'll, I'll make an appointment and try to figure out. I know they moved into their new building. They had a lot going on, and I was I was set right here at this table, and I was set if the 40-hour deputy wasn't here that they'd have one of the traffic guys out there that would actually come in and sub the hours that Chris that signed to this town if he wasn't available, they'd bring one out that was on traffic duty. So if they did do that, I would get that documentation. And it should be more documented. If they did do transfer from the old sheriff's building to the new sheriff's building, and there was two other things that happened, and it wasn't with this, it was something else I worked with them that it got lost in translation and it took a little bit, but we got it back, but not on this part of the, on the other documents we were working with. All right, well, something we'll have to address. Shane, EPW report. Um, we've been going along pretty good. Uh, I've had surgery on my hand, so I've been in and out. Um, we've got, uh, the water tower is, Still, where we kind of, we should have a second sample back tomorrow. We go ahead and put the water tower back online. Um, it's been cleaned, it's been flushed out, disinfected, inspected, um, and filled. We took our first sample. Um, what is today? Tuesday. We took our first sample Monday. Um, it came back good. We took another sample today. We should know tomorrow on the second sample. We have to have two consecutive. Uh, good, samples. good samples before we put it back online, um, which I suppose we'll probably be doing that tomorrow. But, um, we have done our last month, we did a discharge, uh, on our number four lagoon, got rid of probably oh, about 10 million gallons of water, um, treated effluent. Um, we started today, we started the uh, discharge on number three lagoon, um, which will get rid of probably another 12 million gallons of water. Um, so we're looking good on that side. We are gonna have to, uh, we had an inspection last fall and we were, the, the ponds had a lot of duckweed in them. Had a lot of, so we're gonna have to treat that. Um, Eagle has basically said that we need to do something about that, so. Um, I've been in contact with Michigan Rural Water. Um, we've got to go through and apply for a permit uh, because it has to, <coughs> what we put in there has to be that be discharged into the, into the proceeding stream. Uh, and I've been looking at it and trying to find out how I can become a certified uh, aqua aquatic sprayer because being a certified pesticide applicator, there's different sections that you do, and the aquatic one is a completely different one than the, the ground application. So, I'm trying to find out how I can do that because if we hire somebody, it's going to be really expensive, and all it is is just spraying, spraying the uh, aquacide into the. The duckweeds cause because they have too many geese. Yeah. Why have a geese guy? We're working very hard. Yeah, goose season's over right now, but it's we'll be ready to come, come fall. Yeah, I would say overall last season those are pretty darn effective. Yeah. Yeah, and it uh, it it not only takes uh, 
ducks and geese out of the population, but it actually keeps them away from the lagoons for a while. I would say by mid-November of Thanksgiving, there weren't any bird, birds learned not to go there. Yeah, it wasn't a safe spot for them anymore. <laughs> it wasn't safe anymore. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think it worked pretty good. Yep. That program will continue. Yep. Yep, I think it worked pretty good. Um, Once you have uh, okays on the water tower, are you going to start flushing hydrants then? Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, that's, that's the plan. Um, it'll probably be. Uh, I'm not sure whether I want to wait until school's out um, because of the construction going on. I may start before school's out here within the next week or two. Um, I'm not sure as the as the news newsletter went out with saying that we we're going to do hydro flushing. Yeah, I suppose that may show how you Yeah, so. Guess I'll wait. Yeah, so it, it, we're going to start it here in the next week or so. Um, but we want to get the water tower back up online, get everything set so we know it's, everything's working okay. Um, I've got uh, two quotes back for SCADA. Um, our SCADA went down. SCADA basically turns the pumps on when it's supposed to turn the pumps on, turns the pumps off when it's supposed to turn the pumps off. Uh, that quit working. I had a uh, SEER report for bad on one of my uh, my com cards. Um, I found another port that uh, worked, so it's back up and running. But the company that put it in uh, has went out of business, uh, so we have no technical support and parts are really hard to find. Um, I've got a quote from Northern, which is in the packet, which that's just one of the quotes. It's probably not the one we're going to go with anyway. Um, I've got one from uh, UIS, which they're actually out of Dexter. Uh, very close. Uh, they've done a lot of them. Uh, I wouldn't feel bad about that. They use all Allen Bradley uh, components. Um, the other guy, RS Technical, super thorough. Came and spent a lot of time going through every aspect of the, the welds. Um, the BFDs have to be in there on control. Um, startups, uh, shutdowns on the, on the BFDs, it all has to be programmed in there. So he's very thorough, very good. He does follow bills in Williamston's. So he's around a lot. Um, I really, I'm waiting on his to come in, and I'm really hoping it's going to be the lowest. If not, we may have to take a look at the two and, and decide which one's going to be the best one because he was kind of looking at it and kind of playing it for the future. It's not one that here we're going to. This is what you're going to have, and then who knows down the line. But he was actually planning on. He says, you know, we'll be able to integrate your your lift stations into this if you want to do that and be able to turn pumps on and off at the lift stations and stuff along with the, the controls for the water tower and the, the wells so um just waiting on that to come back in it's not something that we had budgeted for but it's not something that we can go without um like i say it turns the pumps on turns the pumps off um when you come in one day and you realize you haven't used any water in 24 hours or haven't pumped any water in 24 hours then you go through and reset the system and it shows a water tower you know low low level alarm going off and you don't have any idea that it's wrong because the computer is actually froze there's no communication back and forth so um that's something that we're going to have to look at when i get those quotes back in i'm hoping by the next meeting uh i'll have all three of those quotes and we can make a decision on that um, another thing that was in here was there was valves and uh, check valves that had to go in in order to, uh, we were leaking water from the distribution system back into the wells, um, which if you do that, when you add oxygen and chlorine back into a well, it'll create like an like a, uh, iron bloom and it'll cut down on the uh, longevity of how long the well can operate at within the parameters that it's set for, you know, to uh, to be a good well. So um, that had to go through. We couldn't get the pressure gauges adjusted because it kept back beating. Um, that was done um, so we could do the, so we could take the water tower offline. Um, but other than that, we put water services in, fixed a couple water services. Um, the new house on Cherry Street, finally got that taken care of. So. Uh, that's all good. Um, just kind of waiting for the startup of the, the Main Street project and everything ready for that. Is there any movement on 
replacing slash repairing the hydrant out on the corner of Elm and Grand? I haven't forgot about it. Yeah, Grand River and Elm. Yeah, I haven't forgot about it. It's still on the board. Um, we once I think once we get the Main Street project rolling, um, once I get back, you know, full speed, I think we're going to go out there and start piling mm -hmm. some stuff mm -hmm. and see what we can find out. I've got some numbers of a couple places I think we're going to have to put uh, um, an insertion valve in there. Uh, we need to have one anyway to isolate because we can only isolate, I think, 12 inch. We can't isolate the 6 inch or vice versa. I'd have to take a look. Um, because it, they didn't put a valve in there. They've right. got those two lines tied together and we've got no way of shutting it down to do a, a repair. So, I um, haven't forgot about it, still on the board. Um, and I know it's, we don't know the complete timing, but it'd be nice if we could do that before that presumably restaurant right. again is repaired and operational so we're not right. affecting anybody who would be in there. Right. Yep. And I don't know when they plan on finishing and having an occupant, but right. Yeah. No, I think it's it's gonna be simple pothole and take the back truck out there and do some hydro estimate and try to figure out what goes where. Um try to locate a valve for that hydro. If there's a valve for that hydro we can just shut it off and replace it, but I don't think there is. Right. I think we're gonna to have to have a valve inserted there. I think we have, I have to have a valve inserted on the I think, 12 inch. So that's going to be some cost, but it's going to eliminate the hydrant not working there. It's going to eliminate us not being able to shut down the, the line to repair it. So, right. I haven't forgotten about it. Still on the still on the board. Oh, yeah. You think you should still put one right there in that same spot, <laughs> that close to the corner? Yeah. I mean, it's it's lasted there this right. long. You know, it's not as soon as we get it working though, somebody's going to hit it. <laughs> I don't think the council understands like that that water line that we put in the random house how much work we went to. That was, that was pain. So Scott's on Cherry Street? Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys understand? So Scott's got denied by Ingham a drain commission to, you know, burrow underneath the roads too close to their Yeah, they wanted us to have a uh, inspection they wanted us to have a permit, a crossing permit. And then they wanted us to charge us like $2,000, $2,500 for inspection. Well, there's a drain that runs down through there that's 17 foot deep. And we were putting our water line at about five and a half. I don't know what they're going to inspect, and I don't know why they're charging us a crossing fee to go across our own road. But we ended up, I think, there was just some administrative fee that they tacked onto it. So, but we got it done. Good. But I had to call. Carla and then Carly we had to get all the days and days and then they verbally okayed it for the next day until they could get there. Right? Yeah. So I guess I do some kind of duties. Dave's gonna be retiring, so we don't know what we're gonna get. Mm -hmm. We're short staffed at it at being having drink commission anyway, so right. How's the dump truck count going? I have been checking on that. I've got a. Um, we got Buckley on call and we got D and K waiting for an allotment. I've got a, I've got a guy down in Detroit looking around down there. Um, I've got one call that I've got to make to, uh, he's a service manager for, I think, Volvo and International, but he deals with all brands, so. Um, How far is too far for us, that, like reasonably, to fetch something or have something delivered? I don't think at this point, I think we could fly somewhere and drive it back. <laughs> well, because I, in, in my work travels, like I drove 1,200 miles through Arkansas, Missouri, and um, Kansas a couple weeks ago, and every single dealership I drove by, they got a single axle out there. And yeah. I, was, I, was <laughs> thinking, I, I thought the same thing. I was like, oh, the cost, no. you know, two, two, two grand to go get it. No. It's yeah. out of the Rust Belt. Yeah. You can I mean, find one. Yeah. yeah. It's, no, no doubt. Doubt anything, but I think that's just my eye out. I went to do with the internet. I went to Pennsylvania to buy a fire truck. I bought our, our rescue out there in Pennsylvania. Right. Um, the department was selling it. Is that exactly what we needed? Um, I talked them down from I think seventy five to sixty and bought it and drove it back to Pennsylvania. So yeah. All right. Well, I'll keep a closer eye on them. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> 
Luckily, that's what they just go on global internet, and then they slide in a couple of Minnesota to the ground. Yeah, anything. Anything else for uh, Shane from the council? Oh, I'm good. Okay. Move clerk to the beach. I completed my first year of MMP and could do the learn a lot, made a lot of connections. I do have a few people now I can contact for certain things that I might need help with. Um, Pammy did a great job coming out for me while I was gone. And we have been working hard to organize what's left to organize in there. She brought some boxes to go through. Um, taxes are coming up soon, as I already told you about the letter and um, audit that we're going to try to get ahead of time. So, that's the issue. So, when you say taxes are coming up, we'll just get you more busy around there because of the summer tax. Coming. Yeah, I was just going to warn people after they're coming. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Extra stuff. Thank you for that. All right. Anything for the court treasurer from the council? Okay, the Largo Downtown Development Authority Report. Yeah, Got anything more to say about how we're coming on by the parking lot already? Yeah, they're scheduled for the escalation is scheduled for um, next week to start pulling all the soil out of that parking lot. So, 14th and 15th, I don't know if they reach out to Shane. No? I figured they'd at least do like a mistake or something. <laughs> Uh, there's been several mistakes on it. Yeah. So okay. it's all been for different stuff. And yeah. Is there any lines through their uh, villages? Not that I know of. <laughs> there's some lines through there, but I don't know where they go. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been so many different things, I guess. Or right. It's been so long that I don't really have any records of water service going in there. But there's that vault in there that has some some plumbing lines in there. Yeah. I don't know whether they're for old, you know. Part of the gas station or whether right. you know water lines or what i mean i once they come in there and start doing stuff i think we're gonna have to find out yeah so yeah i mean probably even just crack that plate and see if it actually has water yeah because <laughs> yeah. that would probably yeah be we don't want some some old galvanized pipe left in there hooked up live that's yeah gonna explode one day and ruin the parking lot so. yeah um so yeah we'll be doing that and then uh, we're still, I think it's going up a bit for the parking lot, but yeah, we'll work on that. And then uh, we did get the phase two, we haven't got the soil, soil boring test back, um, but we did get their assessment back for the phase two on the Ford building. And the only thing they found was a old um, fuel oil tank in the back parking lot. Which um, from all in ground, huh? in ground or above ground? In ground. In ground. They said small, so I don't know. They didn't identify how many gallons or whatever, but they said it'd probably be a good idea to address that. But obviously, there's no petroleum tanks, you know, for the gas station, so that's a huge plus. So as long as the soil moorings come back clean or you know generally above where the threshold is then the hope would be that the DA will continue to pursue that purpose. Billboard coming. I do not know, because I actually just emailed them while I was sitting there, because hmm. they were supposed to have the redesign done. Yeah, I thought that would have been done by now. Yeah, so I will, uh, I'm on. if they don't respond to me um, tomorrow, I mean, Marty Wolf is always very kind to call me when they're not getting a payment, so. Right. I feel like I can call them when they're not getting design stuff done. Um, the other, uh, another thing with the Main Street project coming up, um, are the plans in place for the Mr. Wheeler statue for that to be temporarily located somewhere? Are you in talks with uh, the companies who are going to do the foundation work for that? Um, I need to talk to Alan about that because he originally said that when they came through and ripped up that corner, um, they were going to put in like a really good cement base. And then Royal Stone was already said that they donate the like caps for around it mm -hmm. and then put it back. Um, I haven't really talked about it. I mean, probably talk with Shane about finding a way to move that. Probably just moved on the opposite corner for right now. Okay. So, but we do probably need to do that before. And we'll say it's only a couple, few weeks before that 
brakes, there should at least be a plan in place of right. yeah, moving up. where it goes. And I don't know. So you guys have pallet forks now, don't you? No. Oh, you don't? No, we don't even have tobacco right now. I thought, oh. we, I thought we approved pallet forks. We approved it. Didn't fix it. So where did we come up with? We're going to have to have it rented up there, aren't we? I, I'm still waiting on that other, that other, uh, well, that hasn't showed up yet. No. I was talking to Max. I thought that was already installed. So yeah. we'll wait for that harness. The other big, the seat program. Yeah, the other, they, they, they figured that both the joysticks went bad on it. So they've got the one joystick and then they had to order the other joystick and it's coming from John Deere out in Illinois or wherever. And we already, we got that into what we had to pay, right? We got the left one in, the right one's another. Another bill that's coming. Don't you want to go to my locker in Illinois again? <laughs> is, is this a young guy that's just changing parts, or is somebody? I, I told him that I'm not paying for. I mean, a monkey can change parts. Yeah. I mean, fix it. So he had somebody else come out with them, and they went through and did everything, and they're not getting signals for their cam buses from the from the controller. So they figure one went bad and took the other one out. So I'll work on that though. I'll look at see if because I mean I can always grab my skid stir if I need to, but otherwise I mean I think O'Neill still has one out on Elm Court, which would be a lot easier to drive from town. Mm -hmm. Put the pallet forks on, just lift it and move it. Right. So and then we can just temporarily probably just put weights on it instead of bolting it to that side, just put enough weights on so it doesn't move. I mean I don't think it's gonna move it. It's gonna be a late game other problem, but it's yeah. pretty heavy. Yeah. So Josh, now with us having a funeral home coming in, I'm still saying, you know, that coffee shop would be a real nice addition. <laughs> I mean, really, it would. Yeah. Coffee bereavement. That's what I'm saying. Coffee shop. <laughs> and have you had a chance to talk to any of the nonprofits about how uh, we were talking about the housing? Yeah, they're so far, most of them are having financial issues because a lot of the grants and stuff. You know, I think a lot of them were used to the COVID money mm -hmm. that was funneling out pretty excessively. And now that all that's getting clawed back, now most of them are starting to tighten their belt. So, so they, they liked some of the ideas they were very attention to, but they said they have to, um, one of them was like, we have like five facilities that we've had to close that we're just paying for the EPI now because we can't afford any grants. So, but I'll keep trying on it. Okay. So, it'd be pretty cool. And obviously, the Ford building, once we get that renovated, you know, once we buy it and renovate it, obviously that can open a bunch of options for a community center, other stuff too. Definitely needed here for the youth. And yeah. even we could do like a youth slash senior center. Right. Okay. okay. Will you speak to um, the Gator situation? Oh. So, Just so everyone's in the know. Yeah, so I reached out to Brad and, and Sam about uh, and Michigan Bids had two state um, gators. There were 6.5 I's that were up for auction. One had a, bow, a box V plow on it. Um, pretty, you know, one had 500 hours, one had 800 hours, so nothing crazy. And uh, I got approval from Brad to bid on those um, up to a certain amount that went past the like 50 see grand. Where did it land? You know? uh, the one was like 17 something, mm -hmm. and then the um, one without the plow got up to like 12 something. So, I mean, it was, nice. they were cool because they were fully enclosed glass. Like, you know, they were, you know, they even had keyless entry fobs and remote starts and stuff on them. I mean, they were pretty. They're the commercial series, it's exactly what we would want. Yeah. Them. At seventeen grand for something that used, yeah, the twenty fifteen model. That's that seems eight seasons of salt. Yeah, so they were pretty pretty clean from the pictures and stuff. I mean, it was kind of shot in the dark of like, hey, if we can get some for cheap, why not? But yeah, right. got outbid. The same guy bought all. There's a two thousand twelve one too, and he bought all of them. <laughs> so he must really like them. And I heard that the the DEA may be willing to sponsor part of the payment for. That's unofficial, but I 
I will bring, it might be one. Yeah, it's like I will bring the VA to see if they would be interested in obviously paying for part of that because it does obviously serve the downtown and it would be a kind of a good thing to have. So I'm not sure about other municipalities, but I know, like I said to Sam, is like I know almost all of the municipalities like Grand River take care of their snow on down, like the downtown. Um, so I know Williamson does it with the brushes or whatever. But they've got a lot of those things because the one during the winter, seeing that I, I want to say they have four or five of them out running. So, but uh, but yeah, we'll continue. Continue that, but yeah, I will bring it up to the DEA because it wouldn't be a bad idea to, you know, if we could substitute part of it or pay for a lot of it. I mean, I don't think we'd be able to do all of it because we can only spend money inside our district. So it would have to be a purpose of like serving, serving for that and maybe the village picks up the part for their usage of it outside of the DDA district. Gotcha. All right, thank you, Dr. Martin. Yep. Did everybody get a chance to look at the building zoning report here from Jim Wright, ordinance officer? Mm -hmm. Looks like he was busy. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the NISA report, which we don't have Sandra here today. She actually sent me a text. Okay. Um, asking if I could report. I'm like, oh, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so she said basically all it is is she brought it up again for the 20,000, she said, and they're going to talk to it with the attorney. So basically. So I, can you enlighten us on that? Is Gordon and the attorney working back and forth on the 20 grand or what? That was the agreement that the DEA voted on that they would accept. And Gormley was working on putting that together and going to send it to NISA. So, I mean, from the standpoint of the DEA, as it sits now, is if NISA tries going for more, we're just going to be done with it because it's, you know, there's too much of this back and forth. I think that's reasonable and I think we can do stuff later on, but right now there's a lot of things that that money needs to be used for here in town. Um, obviously we have the tech drive that's going to be, or high view drive is going to be needing some massive repair here soon and I have a feeling that's going to take a big chunk of the DD's money for quite a while. So. Have you seen the, the river? Revenue sharing agreement at Village Board. You see what they were talking about in their meeting? I mm -hmm. just got the chance to see it. Well, good night. You and I were there with Mr. Griffiths. He was the one that we tried to go forward and then he backed it up. And yeah. Now we, yeah. And that's what keeps happening is, you know, we tell them we, we feel comfortable with 20 grand and then they come back wanting more. And it's just not, it just can't can't happen. I mean, it's not saying that we can't help them out with other things, but obviously there's a lot of other issues, stuff. And I mean, with VDA children too, of doing a fall festival type of thing, obviously that's a bunch of our money too that we're going to spend to, you know, bring back kind of like an Oxros esque event back to the town. Gotcha. Okay. Definitely would be something that would be nice to get resolved, but. I don't know why our lawyer and their lawyer don't collaborate better than what they do, but they don't. It's been going on for over two years now. Yeah. Yeah. For definitely. That's usually what it is, is we get so far and then they get so far and then we can't see eye to eye and then it just goes back and forth. And I mean, we've been trying to, for the most part, keep the attorneys out of it because it doesn't really make sense for them or us to basically spend a ton of money on attorney fees, you know, for... That eats into the revenue sharing agreement. Right. I mean, that just does quickly. Yeah. As the attorney said. <laughs> I mean, the, agree, the agreement that we have that, you know, we're agreeing to is, you know, that we said we'd go forward on. I mean, I think it's a solid agreement and it has in there that we can, you know, we renew it every year and it can go up and down based on, you know, how it is, and I think that's that's reasonable because I don't think there's any. I don't think anyone from DDA doesn't want to help where they can, but obviously, you know, we also have to worry about the money being spent here too. 
to make sure that we are covering a lot of the obligations we have to cover and pay for. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Scott Gould, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you, Brad. Um, White Rose, the appeal in circuit court is still pending. I've not received an order or an opinion from the circuit court judge on that matter. That's the protracted litigation we had with uh, the outdoor storage with White Rose. Um, also with White Rose, subsequent to that litigation, uh, Jim Wright has filed two more tickets, issued two more tickets to White Rose. Um, uh, Jim Wright, or I'm sorry, uh, 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 the name slipping my mind right now. Jay Rittman attended the first civil infraction, defended. Uh, however, the judge, uh, the magistrate, still ruled in the city's and the village's favor. Uh, we wrote an order to that effect. The magistrate signed it, dispatched it out. The next ticket was uh, uh, illegal occupancy or, or um, occupancy without an official uh, certificate of occupancy. Uh, Jay Rittman. Did not attend that one. It was a default. Again, an order was issued to the magistrate. I have not seen that order come back yet, but what has happened since those two subsequent tickets post the, the big litigation, um, I have received an appeal from Jay Rivens' attorney. So they're appealing these last two tickets that have gone through the system. What was the first one for? Uh, the first one was for. Um, I'll have to look it up. The second one was for occupancy, but I can find the, I can't okay. remember what the first one was off the top of my head. It was another code enforcement violation. I think it was pertaining to, um, I'll just look it up before I go down the wrong road. Okay. Um, anyway, so on the horizon, it looks like we've got more appeals coming forward, more litigation as to the, the things that have uh, been heard and, and ruled on so far, at least at the uh, magistrate level. Their appeal will they'll be taken to district court, and I suspect we'll be back in front of Judge Allen again. Um, Jamie Hort, she pled uh, since the last time we've been here. She actually she entered a plea of no contest. Uh, the original charge was fifty to hundred thousand dollars. The plea agreement was reduced to a no contest of one thousand to twenty thousand dollars, with the stipulation that. Um, that she would still be liable for all the monies that she took that we could prove uh, through the audit and whatnot. Um, and, and also the, the jail sentence is on the back end of the sentence. So effectively, why they do that is the hopes that you let the person out, you let them work, you garnish their wages, you garnish whatever money they, they take in. And as long as they're making payments as scheduled, as however it's set up by the court, um, whatever that value is, um, as long as she makes payments, she doesn't breach other terms of her um, probation, such things as, you know, it would probably be drug tests, it would probably be um, a clause in there that says something to the effect that she cannot break any other laws in the state of Michigan. Um, I mean, she's going to be monitored pretty tight. Um, but effectively, if she, if she follows through, she pays back the village, she doesn't break any more laws, uh, then the jail will be, the jail time will be, will be mitigated, odds are. If she violates, go ahead. Okay, so she's only gonna be responsible for between 1,000 and 20,000? Nope. So that, so what the prosecutor, from what I gathered from talking to the prosecutor, they agreed to a reduced charge. Um, However, Jamie's still liable for all the money due and owing above the $20,000. So the reduction in the charge is merely a bargaining chip to what the ultimate sentence could be, but Jamie will still be responsible for every penny that was taken from the village that we can prove, that we can show that she Okay, does. so the $98,000, mm -hmm. she's yes. responsible for that. Yes. I mean, we've got to get the final numbers down to the prosecutor but she'll be liable for whatever we can prove through plant Moran and the like. Okay. Is the one to 25,000 still a felony level charge? It is, yeah. Okay. Let's throw another big what if out. What if 
she's working and paying for a while and something happens and she can't work anymore and she's at a disability. Well, that's a, that's an inherent risk. I mean, it is possible. Um, I mean, at, at that point, uh, we would have to really rely on the probation, the parole to verify that the disability is legit, that there's no other sources of income. I mean, that's, I guess that's true for anybody. I mean, it, that's what I'm saying. It can happen. She it could. could end up getting hurt and, and get or a killed. I mean, you never. That's what I'm saying. Or she, she could get laid, you know, laid well, off. Or... There's two pieces of this. So we do have a bond, we do have insurance that's going to cover, in my humble opinion, it needs to cover the whole thing. But even if the insurance covers less than the whole thing, we'll get our money back. The person that actually is going to be collecting the restitution will be the insurance company because they're the ones that are now not whole. We will be whole through the insurance proceeds. So that concern of the insurance company and whether or not they get those restitution payments, that's, that's their issue, not ours. I suspect, though, just from talking to our insurance provider, talking to the prosecutor, I'm not sure that we're going to get every single penny from the insurance that we have that we have in mind. Um, right now, they're trying to push back and say that there's limited coverage based on when the theft took place. Um, so, in theory, if let's say the hundred thousand dollars was taken, and the insurance company only provides up to fifty thousand dollars worth of coverage, then it's going to be my position. If there's no, if that's true the way it's got to be, it'll be my position then that. The village gets restitution first, and then the insurance company gets after the fact. So we'd get our first 50. So we'd get 50 from the insurance company. Restitution payments would come to the village first. And as soon as we were made whole on both ends of that crime, then the insurance company would get their restitution for the expenditure of their policy. Does that make sense? Or? It does. Yep. Okay. It does. Um, so, um, the next step in this felony process is that she has now entered into this plea. She then has to meet with parole, the state of Michigan. They're going to go do a background check. They're going to try and figure out as much as they can about it. And then they're going to put together a proposed sentence in which the judge will read. The defense team will get a copy of this proposed sentence. The prosecutor will get a proposed uh, sentence. And the judge will. And ultimately, the judge decides what the sentence will be. Where we can have our voice be heard is at this moment now. Um, any person from the village, whether just a citizen on the street or the council, or if you want to have a collective voice through me, uh, however you want to do it, we need to tell the prosecutor exactly our feelings about how this, what happened here. Because the prosecutor will take those voices and move it to the parole agent and include that in the sentence report. That will hopefully be influential to the judge. It is plausible that the judge reads the sentence report and says, I'm not even going to let you accept this plea deal. And that is, the judge gets to make the final decision on this thing for sure. But if he goes along with it, I think it's wise to at least voice our collective voice, again, either through me or, or through somebody, because we do have victim impact rights. And it's effectively just a statement of, you know, what was the wrong? In the, what are some of the ramifications from her action? How would a taxpayer go about being heard? Well, as simple as just writing a letter. Um, to, I would, to who? To, to the village? I would send it right to Ingham County Prosecutor. And I can get a, the name, and her name is uh, Jamie Nelson is the prosecutor that's in charge of this thing. Mm -hmm. And I can get you um, contact information or just call the Ingham County Prosecutor and they'll dispatch you right to Miss Nelson. Um, I prefer the more voices that we have. I mean, I don't have a problem if you wanted me to try and have a collective voice, but I personally like having more pieces of paper for more individuals. Yep. I think that brings power. And I also suggest, because uh, their sentence will be June 26, provided it doesn't get adjourned. Everyone's welcome to attend, too. I personally plan on attending. Um, do we have a date for that yet or no? June 26th. June 26th. Yep. And I think the more people that are sitting in the gallery where the judge is looking at you and you're looking at him, 
the more pressure it is to render a sentence that we believe is more fair and equitable. So um, these are just some things that you want to think about, but it's going to be here before you know it too. So um, I don't know what the rest of the council's thoughts are, but I think that's if we get the contact inf information from Scott, I think we should at least put that information on Facebook I agree. to the public that if they want to be heard, that this is an opportunity and avenue. For that. I definitely agree. Okay. Maybe the water bill as well. I don't know if timing would work for that, but. Okay. I think the sooner it goes out, I agree, yeah. Facebook, and then also include it because water bills already gone up for this month. Right, yeah. So definitely Facebook, but we could post something on the door. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because this is the only shot. I mean, it, once the sentence is rendered, the likelihood of the judge hearing any concern is probably long gone. So short <laughs> the time of time is of the essence on that piece. Um, as I mentioned, right now there's a bit of a pushback from the bond with the insurance company. They're trying to say that the uh, the, the date of loss is boxed into a, a one-year term of the bond. So apparently these bonds roll over every year. And so they're saying that the, even though Jamie's actions uh, took place over a period of a couple years, they're saying, look, uh, we're only going to endorse the bond that uh, was from, uh, say, April, was it? Yeah, April of last year, back one year, roughly, which works out to be about fifty-six thousand dollars. I don't agree with that. Um, I it's my intention to review the bond. I just received the bond information. I'm going to review it. Um, the part that I have a hard time accepting is that this was an act of fraud. I understand if the village was experiencing fraud, we knew it and we didn't act on it, I get that you lose your rights to remedy. However, fraud in and of itself is concealing your actions. <laughs> we, had, we had no idea that this was an issue. In fact, uh, as I mentioned to the insurance people, we had the state of Michigan in here, we had Plant Moran in here. It wasn't for the lack of effort of trying to figure out what was going on here. And so I do think we have a good argument to get more than one bond or at least more payment than what they're suggesting at this point. Um, I just got to put some correspondence together and, and start pushing on to see if we can get that fixed. But I'll keep you posted as to that. Uh, when I started getting a little upset with the insurance uh, lady, uh, she reminded me that she's only the, uh, the representative or the adjuster or something like that. And the messenger. Right, fine. <laughs> Was that? The messenger. And the messenger, more or less. So point taken. I mean, I don't. I'm, I guess I was just taking it personal because I just felt like it was, it just didn't seem very genuine. I thought you're just looking for a way out because now it's time to pay up. But either way, we'll cross that bridge. Um, the next issue that I worked on was Otis Elevator. Um, I don't know if it was last council, the council before that, um, a request was made for me to look into Otis Elevator, their contractual obligations and what they have been doing for us as far as performance. Their contract obligates Otis to send out somebody at least quarterly to do general inspections, which could include uh, light maintenance, greasing, and, and the like. Uh, they provided, I, so with that information, I requested their quarterly reports, and they were only able to provide me that somebody was here uh, July 1st of 22, and uh, November 10th of 22. Um, so that, and when I brought this up to the man on the phone, uh, he knew where I was going with this, as in, Either we want some money back, or you're going to credit us going forward. So something's going to happen here. Um, I haven't provided any more correspondence to Otis at this time. I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page before I start causing hell, especially if something has changed since the last time we met. Uh, so it is my intention, short of somebody saying, hey, Scott, we got this covered, is to send a letter to Otis making those demands, either credit us or give us money back. Um, there was a question brought up about short-term disability. I received the village's short-term disability policy right here. Um, the question was, if somebody goes on to short-term disability, there's a waiting period. They call it a, a benefit waiting period, and it's usually about seven days before payments start kicking in on the short-term disability. Um, so that seven days in that benefit waiting period, 
from what the lady told me on the phone, though I haven't read it yet, is that those first seven days of the benefit waiting period, you can be paid sick leave time. But the moment the short-term disability kicks in, it has to stop. Otherwise, if you're collecting in, into the first day of short-term disability, then your sick pay is gonna offset the um, short-term disability and you will not be paid for the equivalent of eight hours or whatever the sick time is. So the long and the short is, so you get injured for seven days, you can cover that with uh, sick leave, sick time, day number eight of which you would normally be employed will then go to short-term disability. So, but I'm gonna confirm that by reading the policy, but it, that's what the lady told me on the phone. That's the way it generally is. Yeah, I just I just wanted to make sure that nobody was you know, getting lost in the wash, and I also didn't want to be in a situation where it also looked like double dip is what Yeah, nobody wants, <laughs> nobody wants to double dip, they just no. want to get paid. Right, exactly. Um, I think that covers pretty much everything I had. That's everything I got for right now, unless there's any questions. So back to um, the Jay Whitman, you know, what we're trying to just like, can't get any letters. So we just last time talking to Scott Gould and Jay Ritt, um, the gym right the ordinance officer, we're trying to just like, hey, just come in and do it. So he didn't show. So Jim Wright, the ordinance officer, mentioned to me that the judge was pretty heated over that mm -hmm. process because he knows we want to resolve this. And he made a comment to Jim Wright that I understand the predicament that the village of Weber goes in and that you want to get it resolved and, and you're not trying to make this stuff up. So at least I think some of the things like we want, we just want to stop and go away and just apply and do the right thing and we don't get anybody to show up. So he's frustrated that Kay didn't show up. Very frustrated. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, when I try to just like, we're just done, I'm, I'm done playing. And so they wouldn't even come to the table to try to reconcile and get this result. So then the judge is favoring the village of Orville saying, look, we understand the frustration. Um, and he was frustrated. Because he didn't show up. So no matter what, you're supposed to show up. Mm -hmm. A call, an email, a show up, nothing. Yeah, on the very surface of it, I mean, it's just, it's disrespectful. I mean, it's, there's, if anything I could give advice to people is if you're told to go to court, <laughs> right or wrong, show up. Don't just... Yeah, it's disrespectful. Yeah, it's disrespectful. As to that first ticket, post long litigation with, again, a ticket on outdoor storage. That's the that's the one where we got the order allowing for the total abatement of the property. Okay. okay. And then subsequent was the... The mini ball control room. That you know about. Mm -hmm. Respect the, the plastic pellets, or even more about plastic pellets. And, yeah. Okay. Hey, back to the elevator. Are we going to maintain Otis as the company? There is nobody else. Well, that's that's why yes, I don't know. Yes, there is. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, nobody else likes the old elevator. Okay. That would be a good idea. Like a third party company, or are you talking? Another company that we had them come in and take a look at, wrote up an estimate. I presented the papers to Brad. Yep. Um, I think Scott mm -hmm. got copies. And I think where we were at was Scott was going to look at the contract with Otis because Otis is obviously not mm -hmm. holding up to their contract. Right. And that's where I think because. They pretty much know that we now know that they weren't here like they were supposed to be. It opens up the door like, hey, look, maybe it's time we part ways. I mean, this is the time that yeah. we're going to negotiate. We might as well. If you guys have interest in going somewhere else, we should do it now as opposed to. Yes. The other company's closed. They've got a very good, reputable. Yeah, I mean, for the longest time, we were under the impression that. We were between a rock and a hard place. I mean, and that is simply not true. Uh, correct. So if, if we have somebody else who's capable and willing. And shows up. And he did show up. Yeah. Okay. So 
don't know if that's something that we need to vote on as a council. So uh, if we proceed to direct Scott Bull to. I don't think we have a contract at this point. Is there a contract? Really, isn't any good? The guys are in breach of it. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're clearly. We need something else in the breach, as far as I can tell, um, until I get a firm answer from them. Uh, because there has been some change over. One of the things I was running into is the original guy that was assigned to this area is now a new guy. So short of them pulling the paperwork out of somewhere and saying, oops, sorry, I forgot to give you this, um, they're in breach for sure. But I personally like to conclude a contract before we get into another contract with somebody, just in case there's some kind of right. misunderstanding. Or well, can you dig into that a little bit more mm -hmm. and find out? Certainly. Because if we're going to break with them, I think now would be the time to do that. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So um, back to the to the Jamie thing real quick. I'm just thinking out loud here is I think it's probably maybe a little overdue that uh, we make some sort of maybe official statement. I mean, I think we had talked about that many months ago, but we were kind of waiting for things to progress appropriately. And I don't know if maybe this would be an appropriate point to, to have Scott draft an official um, press release that we could put in the Lansing State Journal or, or some other larger publication to say, you know, look, we're an acknowledgement of what's happening and, you know, this is an opportunity for residents of Weberville to be heard, you know, here's the avenue in which to do that. I don't know if this would be a good opportunity to officially acknowledge that because up until this point, we haven't really publicly officially acknowledged. It's been broadcast on HMI. It was in the Detroit News. Yeah. Right. It was in the Oakland County Press. Mm -hmm. It was in the Lansing State Journal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's still a, a village. Still what's going to happen? Now. Yeah, a village clerk is a you know. Well, except for the fact that she has a plea on the record, so there, that's there's no turning back from that. I mean, I guess even technically, if she tried to withdraw her plea, I and mean, that's a whole other issue. But um, you know, one of the things when you're prosecuting is you know you're, you're working with the facts that you have, and, and you're trying to evaluate what's the best course of action. And I do think it was prudent on our part to make sure that. We got the plea. Now that that's been set, I think it is probably an appropriate time to have something, a voice from the village, the council, or, or whatever, saying, "Hey, look, you know, this, this is what's happened." Here. Yeah, this, this is what's happened. You know, some verbiage. You know, it's unfortunate that it's happened. You know, we uh, the, the residents. The voices to be heard. Mm -hmm. Here's a way to do that. Mm -hmm. Is that something that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to put the steps. This village has done a ton of steps to make sure, obviously, it never happens again, too. And I think residents would like to see that, too. They're like, hey, this happened. It was unfortunate, but this is what we've done to correct that and make sure it can't ever happen again. And, you know, because I think that way people feel, yeah, it hasn't been plastered all over, but from the village's standpoint, no one's. No one from the village capacity has actually like said anything about it. Yeah, they kind of just been silent on the matter. Yeah. So and, and, and like, yeah, yeah, right, right. yeah. And like you said, with that victim witness thing, I think that would be a great thing to have something, a good statement from the village that says that, and then obviously you include that part where if you would like to be heard or if you know, so on right. and so forth. This is this if is maybe put the approach. prosecutor's contact information. You know, yeah. this is how you can get a hold of somebody yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Express your opinion on it. I think that would be something to put it in the water bill. Yeah. Put it in a I separate mean, sheet. Like that doesn't really have to be like the publication put in the except the water bill, throw it on Facebook and just let it. Well, I was thinking water bill, Facebook, Fowler Bill News, everything reviews, yeah. and Lansing that's State Journal. Well, we have until June 26, right? right. Well, that's the day of sentencing. I personally would put a date if they're going to mail in something. It should be before June 1st. Wait, yeah, yeah. I, as soon as possible because um, that, that 26th of the day, the judge probably already has it in his mind what he's going to do. Yeah, okay. And the only thing you can really do on the 26th is to be there in person and to show 
Right, are you concerned? Any writings? I would say, yeah. Uh, what are we? Today's the ninth. Nine, yeah. Oh, yeah, I would I'd say, say June, like 1st. June 1st. Yeah, so we don't even really have time for you to draft a letter yeah. and the council will review it in two weeks I'd to then have it published and seen. Mm -hmm. And front door, Jessica, so you. It's going to fall on me to get the word out there. Gotcha. Yeah, I think, I mean, uh, I'd, I'd be more than happy to help craft the verbiage. Um, I mean, Josh is quite good at that as well. So if you want help, feel free to reach out. And if you want, um, maybe another angle on this thing too is if it helps. I prefer if people mail it right to the prosecutor. Yeah. However, I don't think anything's compromised by having them meet and drop off their letters here. And I, I could personally deliver them, or we could put them in an envelope from here and mail them on out, just to make sure it gets done. I guess. I'll definitely take them out there. What's that? I'll definitely take them out there. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> or, uh, or even call and see if there's an email that we can email the prosecutor yeah. to. They don't have to be notarized or anything. No, I think it. I, I mean, I would put your name and your contact information, um, but as far as notary and stuff like that. I don't think it should be an, an anonymous letter, though. I think it should be without a doubt. I mean, credibility comes with put your name on it, right? And um, I mean, I guess I wouldn't. If somebody sent in an anonymous letter, I guess I would leave it to the prosecutor and the judge to decide how much credit it gets. But right. um, it's going to be a lot more. Oh, certainly, it goes a lot further. In the, the, in the uh, announcement of it, if you will, I think we should probably put some instructional in there. You know, please include your. Your name and contact information, which you're comfortable sharing, you know. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty good pamphlet. Maybe I could give, make a copy of this and give it to you guys someday. I mean, we, we should be having to get something going. Yep. So. Okay. They got to get an email. So no, I'll go right to that. Is this Nelson? Yeah. I, um, it looks like from this pamphlet. Nelson. Jamie, Jamie, Jamie Nelson. Nelson. Yeah. yeah. It looks like on this pamphlet, it just goes to the, uh, you know, probably the uh, front desk of the prosecutor's office, and then they just dispatch it out to whomever's assigned to the case. And in this case, it would be Jamie Nelson. Right. But. Is, um, is there an email on there? Uh, Let's see. The thing worries me with emails go right to the spam folder. Right. You <laughs> know, yeah, I mean, if email is the only option someone has or time or whatever, I'd take it over nothing. Yep. I personally like handwritten letters. I think I think when a judge has to pick up a handwritten letter, it carries a lot more weight than just print off some email. That's just my humble opinion doing the fence work. Yep. <laughs> I can include the link to that. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah there's on the site. Okay. And I can, I'll give you the case number two so people can maybe the case. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, if you're in a letterhead or in the email subject, you know, yeah. say Village of Weberville, case number, mm -hmm. impact statement, something, yeah. something. So it's uniform. That would probably be the best type thing to do. Yeah. We'll come up with something good. Good. Hope so. Thank you, Scott. Yes, sir. All right, so Jessica Cooch, you want to give us a little rundown on our office printer idea and some tips we have here a little better than what we had prior? So, I got four different shapes. Obviously, the candle that one didn't change. Um, these people did come out, and I met with the Printer Source Plus. They have the Epson printer, and they obviously had the best price, but they also had a list of things that I like them the most. Things that they do. Yeah. The precision or print head, simple, smart, clean, up to 100% energy saving, 65% less waste going to landfills, fast first page out, warranty up to seven years, filling the pages, no messy toner, small footprint in their class, soft closing doors, paper cut copper embedded, heat free print process, prints on envelopes with and without plastic windows. Plant based ink, OCR scanning options available for from 40 to 100 pages per minute. User friendly, water resistant ink, and they are shack approved. Did you say shack approved? Yeah. Yeah, I asked them to write this up because 
I guess it's different from other printers that are out there. So I was like, well, that's nice. So what? And it's a family run business too, out of Jackson. Mm -hmm. Out of Jackson. Josh, <laughs> Jessica. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so sorry. Sorry. No, go ahead. You sure? Yeah. Jessica, so I see that for the unique imaging, you do not have a maintenance contract. So do they include the maintenance in the later runoff? They said it's a per page. And that it really depends on what the tent needs to be done. So there's not really a maintenance contract. Like a page you go. Right. And, uh, and with the other maintenance contracts, what are they going to include with the maintenance? So you get your ink, which is a huge cost. Um, they will, like this one, they can remote in and fix any problems you have. They'll come out immediately if you have any issues. Um, and the print in that cost also is the pages. Like we get, we get charged per page. Correct. Um, and that cost is in that. And so with the uh, ink, the is that out. like per month or per month or quarter? The ink, they actually, um, I guess there's software that they sense it getting low, so we don't have to like keep a back stock of ink. If they sense it getting low, they'll either bring it up to us or they will mail it up to us before we even know that it's going to get low. Yeah. I know that was my AP made it sense to me that. <laughs> so I'm about to do, so is that a staple too for you? Yes. Okay. $6,183.74 to buy it outright and then ninety seven fifty two for the monthly contract. And right now it's a monthly contract with one of the Um, that one, I don't think we have a monthly contract because they don't send us ink, we have to buy it. Right. Um, there is a maintenance contract. Yeah, it's like $45. So they don't all the time, so then they charge extra. Do you have a monthly one, Josh, that is like a lower than what? Do you have one? Did you buy outright? And how do you? We bought ours outright. We actually bought it after the lease was over. So that's kind of how we did it. So we just do that off the street. So you leased it first. Yeah. And then, and then at the end of the lease. Yeah, because our, our machine, I think, was like $32,000 brand new. And I ended up buying it for, I think, six grand. So how do you deal with these prices? Are these reasonable? I think the Epson's not bad. And that's if you buy it outright and $97 a month for maintenance, if they're going to cover the toner. I feel like that's pretty cheap. Because those toners are about $500, could be $400 or $500 a piece. And that's for each color. Assuming the maintenance contract doesn't change regardless of lease or buy, we would be saving almost $2,000 by buying it outright. It would, cost, it would cost over 60 months. Yeah. It would cost eight thousand and fifty dollars to lease. Yeah. So it makes, I mean, it makes more sense to just buy it. I mean, you're gonna wait mean, five years, five six years. You're probably have some. Now that was ninety seven dollars without page count. If you bought it out, right? What's that? For the page count. You bought it outright, page count. Yeah. You still Are you still yeah. paying That's in per page? Huh? It's in the maintenance fee. Oh. Okay. Which is, what, what was that per month? It was like 97. That one was a rough estimate, 9752. That's like the max pages we would do a month. Okay. Yeah, because you guys probably don't go through like a case of paper a month, do you? No. Yeah. Not all the time. We're going to try to be more uh, like people friendly. Yeah. yeah. And as long as. So I did the math, and as, as long as it lasts at least 47 months, so four years, mm -hmm. after 47 months, we're saving money. Right. Which a, that, a printer of that grade should easily last four years. Yeah. How much does it cost the one that we had now? I mean, the only, the only downside of honestly right now is like there was a huge shortage of printers for especially high end printers for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to see a lot of the printers that people did buy 
during this whole time, even now, are yeah. poor quality. They're they're having the issue a lot more. But I mean, if the maintenance so does the maintenance cover parts too, mm -hmm. if it breaks. How but, soon yeah. can we get the answer? We can within a week. Oh, that's good. Week week. Not a bad. All of them actually said that so they could get it done quick. Yeah, they did. Did they mention it? Salesman at their finest. <laughs> did they mention if there's any other benefits with leasing in terms of, I mean, there's a maintenance contract, but. Not you know. really. I think it's more of what you can afford. Right. Because I understand maintenance covers paper, ink, and all that, but if it needs a new computer card or something. Oh, they've got that one covered. Right. There's a seven year warranty or six million pager. And we never reach six million. Yeah, so we figure that if it's a seven year warranty, then you say the payoff is at four. The break even is four, four years. Yeah. yeah, so you're talking three years that you still have coverage after right. the break even. Makes, so, if I mean, that's the one we go with, it makes sense to buy it. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't sound like a bad price. And I didn't look up that exact model, but I mean, Epson does make good printers. and. Especially if you have that much coverage. Yeah. The only thing I would probably ask them, which would be a benefit for the village, is if they do a loaner program, if they can't get your ends and printer back up and running. So, this, especially again, with there's still parts issues going on right now. Is and, it? and that would be a bad, bad deal if you guys end up getting. You said something about these ones rarely have issues because of the way they like they're completely different from other printers yeah is a print speed of 40 iso ppm good 40 40 pages per minute the one we have right now is 35 yeah okay so that's pretty average. average okay it sucked to buy a printer that was painfully small <laughs> What's the scan right on that? Uh, this not so. Uh, color flatbed, auto two sided, 600 dpi resolution. Scanner speed, uh, 60 RPM. Duplex is one form. Yeah. Average. Yeah. Pretty decent. Um, I think it makes sense. I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of the Epson AMC 4000 through printer source. Plus, not to exceed $6,183.74 and to have a maintenance contract with them. Second. Okay. Any discussion? I appreciate you coming back with, with multiple quotes on this. this yes, is, yeah. This yeah very nice, sir. I put it in the computer before. system, I got like eight calls at <laughs> once. Yeah. It's like, ooh. And you said this is the, the family owned company? Which is company. local? Yeah. Ish? Yes. Cool. Uh, Schulte? Yes. Danko? Yes. Walter? Yes. Hitchcock? No. Pass to purchase or pass to rent on? To purchase. We're going to purchase it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. The handbook. Does everybody got like the little we can recommend yesterday? Uh, I should recommend the council go forward on changes of the handbook. And there's still going to be one in there. It could be a gray area, but I could pretty much. Um, get this so the handbook could be changed if they want to go through it, if everybody's got their little documentation. So, is everybody got page 11? Yeah, for, for it says residency? Yep, so I'm, I recommend that we're going to change that to 50 miles radius. 50 miles? I think 50 miles, the way things are nowadays on the highway at 70 miles an hour. So if somebody's not going to pull the distance, they're 50 miles away. So, and then I, I, my opinion on that is the language is so gray and it's unenforceable. Why even have it in there? Because we prefer me. 
<laughs> There's, it's not a requirement. And the, the state statute, they did away with residency issues. There's, right. a, there's a statute yeah. on point that they did away with. If we have somebody who's well qualified who wants to work, but it's an hour and a half commute and they're willing to do it. I right. say, I agree. Take it up. Yeah. yeah. All right. Take it up. 2.11 is gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. You see that? All right. And then the lunch breaks, breaks, and not to use, cover, employees, arrival, work, free, departure, extended lunch hours, or may regard. Cumulative not taken, take that out because, in my opinion, if somebody wants to work through the lunch hour and leave an hour early to go to the dentist, I, I don't want that. So, take that out. I think that's ridiculous. No rights to the overtime. I'm sorry? No overtime. No overtime. Just if they had something going on where they wanted to work through their lunch because they got a a dentist appointment right. or a basketball game for their kids or something where they mm -hmm. still could get their eight hours in or if they came in late because they went to the dentist because uh, they had a dentist appointment at nine o'clock and they wanted to work through lunch i i don't have a problem with that mm -hmm. i don't okay I, I page see 13. There, i see there being issues though with that page 13 and 304 casual footwear are, such are as flip flops keep moving yes we are why because i'm I'm giving the council what I recommend. And there's, there can be no discussion? I just want to get through this, and then we'll come back to it. Okay. Number 13, casual footwear such as flip-flops or athletic shoes. It's, it states in another place that they can have uh, athletic shoes or tennis shoes. I don't want no flip-flops or open shoes. So. How do you want to word that? Where you just draw a line through that? Just put athletic shoes. Just don't want open. Open toe. Open toe. Open toe. No open toe. Okay. Page seventeen. Breakfast. It was seven dollars. Change after fifteen. Lunch fifteen. Dinner twenty-five. I know Scott Gould had twenty, but I don't know anymore. When you get dinner in the evenings, it's seems to be $25 is what it seems to be per person. Page 18, the harassment. It is policy of the village of Waterville that harassment in the workplace will not be allowed or tolerated. Questions. I, I see you noted that, Scott. What, what do you have any insight? What was wrong with that? Why that would be? Well, as to, uh, we're on the, what? I'm Page sorry. 18. 311. 311. Um, really, to me, uh, by adding the word anyone, I don't think it changes the, the ultimate spirit of the, the language here. Uh, ultimately, an uh, employee policy manual is only effective up and against employees. So, saying anyone, I don't know. I mean, they, so if an employee were to harass somebody that was just a citizen, would that be grounds for disciplinary action? Well, in the event if you were doing, you're working on a water meter and you weren't protecting yourself correctly for a resident, how would that work? If that happened, if the resident was attacking the employee, well, the employee, well, yeah, did that, and then the employee then opened up unprofessional. Yeah, that would. I, I think we'd be in the same spot because that would be an employee that is harassing someone in the community. Right. So that could be grounds for discipline. Okay. So we should be able to leave that in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my understanding is they were going to add the word anyone. Oh, anyone? Into which sentence? Uh, the first sentence. It says, It is the policy of the village world that harassment in the workplace will not be allowed or tolerated by anyone? By anyone. By anyone. By anyone. Okay. By anyone. I understand it now. Does the council understand that then? So after tolerated, you buy anyone. So that was a good example, because I ran into that within the nine years of doing this. Mm -hmm. The guy was okay, and then the resident attacked him, and then he, after a while, he couldn't take it anymore, and then it went back, and then of course, at that point, the resident caused it, yeah. but yet he unprofessionally, so then I had to work with him to get it changed. All right. Page 27, 
work cancellation. This section is still under review. So it's number seven, number eight. No, it's just pertaining to like snowstorms nope, or not this yet. Okay. Um, work cancellation. You're talking number six, concealed weapons? So number six, concealed weapons. Um, my opinion, I think the village of Waterville employees don't need to be carrying during working at the village of Waterville or anything that conducted with the village of Waterville. But if somebody wants to have a better idea of that, then I, I don't know of any other municipality that's along that. Didn't you say Stockbridge or somewhere? I carried the Stockbridge, but I was a police officer at the time, so I was oh. a reserve officer, so different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I ran into a lot of people I arrested, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> They're generally not happy. They don't like you a lot. Bad things can happen. I mean, we would probably have to amend the section if we were to add a police department to exempt them. Yeah, so I'm thinking, you know, that, that could be one of the things that we have to re-change if we got our own police department. Right. Mm -hmm. So at this point, if we just don't have enough information to do the concealed weapons, if we had everybody carrying around here, if all of us carried right here now, and then we had a police department too, who's going to pull it first? Well, can we table this section? What, we're just talking to this section, so mm -hmm. at this point, it doesn't do us any harm, it's here. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll skip over that right now. Okay. Okay. And then the holidays. So we got New Year's Day, President's Day, Good Friday, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, the day after Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve Day. So are we skipping 7 and 8th right now? Yeah, we're just going to see what all of us connect from. So right now we're on number 34, holidays. Does anybody think there's any more holidays? What do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. We're open on Monday. We're not open on. That's right. That was one of the ones that was. Uh, so it's open. Well, when? And, and yeah. Oh, I got that. Right okay. So any other municipalities that we can think of? Are they Martin Luther King Day? Is um, I, I know schools would imagine not in this area. Um, I think some in Howell are. I don't school. know. I don't want to, uh, Schools are open here. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. So I think the holidays are okay the way they are at this point. Mm -hmm. And then. The paid vacation, the length and service of all that, I, I do not want to touch that part on the bottom of page 34. Are you saying so you're fine with it as it is? Or as it is right now, because I want to go to the other parts. I think this will make it better. So the vacation time must be used within the year it's earned, and unused time will be lost. That, get rid of that. Use sick leave for general time off or personal business is not allowed. Abuse sick leave will not tolerate or subject to disciplinary action and include get rid of that. Full time employees are credited seven sick days per year on April 1 each year. Sick leave may be used increments of one quarter hour or more. I, I still don't understand why we have to have it in detail in that. The sick days, they get, they get uh, six, seven sick days. I guess you wouldn't want to have seven sick days in a row, but at, at that point, it probably, you'd be awful sick where that would be a problem. So that's what they're trying to do is tell you the increments of one quarter hour or more for sick leave. On number 13, page 35, Scott Gold, is that, You've seen that kind of wording before that actually makes any difference. You got number 13, six days go from seven to 12, but I, I don't know why they got detail. Full-time employees are credited seven sick days per April 1st each year, which is good, but sick leave may be used in increments of 
one quarter hour or more. This would be the pay for quarter. Meaning they're okay. dividing an hour up into 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that means. So, this, so every 15 minutes. Yeah, so like if you come. You're so if I could take a half an hour off, or I could take 15 minutes off for. So how many times did that really happen versus just an hour? I mean, it just seems like a. We're we're still writing in time sheets. Right. So if you're at 8:35, I'm thinking you're at 8:30. If you started at 7:55, you probably put down 8 o'clock, right? And right. You're probably. Yeah, because we're we're not punching in and punching out. We can leave it there, I guess, at that point. How is, is our regularly hour, hourly employees paid every 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like an hour. Okay. Yeah. I guess it makes sense, Tony. So we can leave that in there. Makes sense with that one because if you're going to be able to flex your lunch hour, because I see no problem with, there's a lot of times that everybody has a dentist, the eye doctor or doctor appointment. But going back to that is employees, I, I, it opens up the door for abuse and what worries me the most is, you know, we have people who are laboring and they decide, well, I'm going to, you know, not take my <coughs> breaks and work eight straight hours. That's just not safe. Now, I think that's something that's going to, generally with, with the staff, um, that's something that's got to be approved. You can't just do it. Yeah. Well, then it, then it should say that. Just getting rid of it and saying, that, oh, yeah, people can just work through their lunch so they can leave early or show up late. And, you know, yeah. then it's a, well, I, I'm not going to take lunch every day. I'm going to come in at 9 instead of 8. I don't think I've had that. That's not the intent that I'm trying to do. That's not the intent, but that's what, it, you know, exactly. by getting rid of that section, that's what it opens it's the door to. Usually they have to do a sheet that they do for. They have to get rid of the doctor office. Yeah, right. Or, I usually get the, the sheet that she has where it says she's so many a sick day. It's, yeah, it's a it's a use of sick day sheet for vacation. We fill out like when we left, like the day that we left, the time that we left, and when we're expected to return. I get so, one from Max. I got one from Greg. I got one from you. Mm -hmm. So I get these sheets that provide the information for it. But if you wanted in the handbook to have stipulate that it has pre approved on my speed. We can do that. Right. The sheet. Yeah. I'll buy supervisor approval. Mm -hmm. Right. But in my, yeah, like you said, they're, they're late every day. They come in and, and then they work through their lunch, trying to get their eight hours. And that, I guess my intent is if, if the employee comes to work knowing that they want to make up or when they have to leave to make an appointment or something else, is when that should be able to be used. And the way it's set up now, it's not used that way. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm okay with that if it's if it's a. Do you know where the wording would be on that, Scott, to make it word that way? Well, they, they mentioned make it approval of the superior. Yes, yeah, supervisor. That's fine. Approval of the superior. Okay. <laughs> Do you know where to put that? Where we got that back up? Where? We, where we, we I, I, I don't think that's going to be a big abuse thing. I think like maybe if somebody's leaving to go up north on a Friday or something, they're saying they'll come to me and say, hey. Can I work through my lunch and leave an hour early or a half hour early? Right. I don't have a problem with that, but it's not generally something. If somebody's doing that like every Friday, yeah, that's not yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't see an issue with that either. It's just I, I trust the crew that we have now, but we don't know who we may have five years, years from now. Yep. No support. This manual has to last a long time. Yep. Um, so number two on twelve would be for approval. I just think it's all the supervisor. Worry. Could that be you or or you or president? That'd be on the page twelve, the number two. Per approval of supervisor or president to be able to do that versus just flexing it whenever they want. Okay, so then we're, we got that one done. 14. We're on 14 in the event of immediate family members that full time employees are provided up to three days paid work days. We we're looking at five days because of the. Sometimes it's out of state. Mm -hmm. I mean, five days is good. In non consecutive days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Non 
non-consecutive. So meaning, you know, you find out that a, a family member passed on Thursday and you want to take Thursday, Friday off, that's two days. But the services aren't for another two weeks where you need to take more time off. You can use those five days, but it doesn't have to be all five days in a row. I believe it has, but it does not have to be consecutive. Right. I agree with that. Number 14. So we'll put in there five days non consecutive for agreement payment leave. All right, number 15 on 36. So remove, that is such a remove second sentence to give jury deputy, jury duty paid to clerk. I, has anybody ever did that? Anybody in work where you work the jury duty and you get paid by where you work, but you got to give the check? I've never. never you know, I've had to do that before. Never. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Never. Uh, the employee will be paid regular duty. No, if I just had to fill out a jury form. Jury what did I get for jury duty? It's like fifteen dollars a day. Yeah, it was twenty-five. I had to give my twenty-five dollar check back to the, the state. So they got to the rest of my salary. I've never been my regular. I, if I had to miss to go to jury duty, I only got paid jury duty. Okay. Really? Yeah. If I was scheduled to work, mm -hmm. but I had to be for jury duty, they didn't pay me. Sorry about your bad luck. You better show up for jury duty, but we're not paying you because you were supposed to be here. That's most Americans. It's the American so, way. Mm -hmm. It's a big duty. We're going to remove the second sentence to give jury duty pay to clerk. I was going to just that that. Is so weird. I mean, really, all that's covered is your mileage pattern for it. It's bad anymore. I know. All right, and then we're already doing this one on page 40, 8-01 Health Vision Dental Insurance. Um, the road will provide health vision insurance for the insurance become effective first month. So the the last person I hired, I said after three months, you know, because if somebody had Blue Cross, even like with my business, that they had the same insurance and they came, they would just continue to keep going. But in the event that I didn't do my job correctly, I mentioned to Ryan that 90 days before the insurance would kick in, where it immediately says right here in our handbook, 30 days. So we want to change it to 90 You're talking days. About the COVID COVID? No, we're talking about when you get hired. Health, vision, and dental insurance. insurance. Yeah, so but once, once you leave a job, your insurance is only good for up to the period you paid for, which is typically the month. And no, I'm not. When somebody starts a new job, like Ryan started here. And when you start a new job, he said after three months you get full benefits. It's always been 90 days. I think that's what it is with Blue Cross. Oh, right. right. 90 so, days. So I think that it's here instead of 90. 30. Yeah. Can we so, change that? Yeah, I mean, so in the old handbook, it says 30 days and they get insurance. Mm -hmm. And when I hired Ryan, I said, after 90 days, you'll get insurance, which I hired him that way, but the handbook showed that it was 30 days. So let's change it to 90 days, but let's stick with the 30 days for him. I mean, he's already got, he's already passed. Yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying, but why would we make, want to make them wait longer? Because that's standard. Well, every company the insurance won't let us. Yeah, we could. The, the Blue Cross was old school, school for, for 90 days. Yeah. That's what they told us. It's, it's like a week. It's 90 days. days. That's we do I'm that so people don't like get right. a job and wait 30 days yeah. and get a big operation where they're going to be out of yeah. right. commission for many months. Kind of puts a little bit more skin in the game. You have to wait 90 days. It's old school. They got the time and it makes it 90 days to 30 days. Old school. The new school is like anybody you go to or anybody you go, usually they say three months, 90 days after that, then go you get full benefits. Mm -hmm. Insurance. So we're going to. I mean, technically now you have Obamacare too, so obviously they can always pick up. You know, if they're unemployed, they can always pick up health care okay. coverage. Number 40, page 43, number 17. Full time employees are vested after 10 years service, eligibility, normal retirement, 10 years. Attendant of six, 60 years of age as a date of retirement. 
I do not have a problem making this um, six years best. Ten years is a long time. It seems like the way we drive our lights at this point, but I, I think this, I, a lot of people are going to the six years for vested versus ten. Would this automatic, do we have any employees who this would automatically make them vested? I don't think so. No. Probably like five years ago. Just great when you're at the thermometer, it's to whatever matter. I've already nice. invested because I was in yours before. All it does is just help not be such a prolonged system to be invested. I mean, 10 years ago, in my, and what I do with our businesses, I, I do. If the guy's been there two years, he's a data boy, he's five years, he's invested, so. Kind of nice when somebody can stick around for five years. It took a while, it was 18 months. So we're changing that to six, six. years? Yes, yeah. I would be honest. Okay. Uniform, safety, retired Very employees. Yeah, are you guys part of MERS? Right? Okay. That that. What, are, what is their requirement? They might have a requirement that you have to stay where you want. Okay. Is that a lot, a lot of time to do because obviously everyone's pulling from that pool. So yeah, people pulling ability to pull faster that creates a drain on their you know system. So that's why I was wondering if they had a requirement or not. Page 44, page 12, uniforms and safety attire. We we've already switched that. The handbook just doesn't recognize it. Six years vested in three percent match. What is that? What's the we what's the three percent match from village to the force fifty seven thousand? It's the same thing we're doing every year right now. 3%. Okay, so, so are we adding that on page 43? We didn't, all we did is went from 10 to 6. So every year the people... Right. So six, it says 6 years vested and 3% match. I don't understand where that comes into that's, the that's the There's a 457 that they said instead of doing a increasing our uh, defined benefit program, because right now we're a B1, to go to like a B3, which it it's it's all it raises the multiplier on what your final average compensation is going to be when you retire. Mm -hmm. um, the 457 is a new uh, it's a new retirement program that it's like a 401k. Yeah, it's like a 401k right. that the employee can opt into, mm -hmm. like say, and it it can be anything. Uh, 3% match, and I see somebody, and I think somebody put on here 10%. You go from 3% up to 10%. Yeah. Um, so 3% so is the minimum. On the match. Yeah. At the, the minimum, the uh, scholar gives you is 3%. Yeah. So, and you go as high as 10%. So, so you put in 3 the bill, you put in 3. Right. That's, okay. So or that, whatever number you want in there. Right. So, so are we, what is it today? We don't have it. Well, after 10 years, we don't have it after 10 years. No, the, 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 the six year uh, vesting is for the defined, defined benefit program. The 457 is something that it's, it's like a 401k. It's like the village will um, match if the, if the employee wants to. Okay, they'll match up to 3%. Right. You can yeah. put in 10%, but the village's match would only be 3%. Right, I think you can put in whatever you want. Right, the, right. The right. village can put in from 3% to 10% match, and somewhere in there. And what we're saying is 3%, so that's got to be so added it, to... Yeah, let's just put the village, will put in a max of 3%. Okay, and then the employee, if they want to do 3%, they put in 3%, the village matches it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so this is this is a an additional program on top of the one that we already have. But it's like a 401k where it's mostly employee based contributions. Right. But if you don't put anything in it, we don't put we don't anything match. in it. Right. So that's being added to that paragraph two on page 43. Just let's change it to six years. I would, yeah, I would assume. Okay. So an example would be what would you ever put into that 457 in one year? What would you do yourself personally? $5,000 in one year? Yeah, probably. Like, nobody's taken advantage of it yet, but I'm doing 2% each paycheck just to test it out. So 5% with 3% would be $1,500. That 
correct, Scott? We're yeah, five thousand. If, if somebody put in five thousand on this four fifty seven, then we grant three percent, which would be fifteen hundred bucks. Okay. Five thousand. Ten percent is five hundred bucks, right? Three percent is three hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So you put in five hundred, the village would put three three hundred bucks in. It's three oh, percent. Yeah, three percent. So. Um, Only one hundred fifty dollars. One hundred fifty dollars for the percent. All right. That goes to some. Well, no. Normally, the way these contributions work is you, you're electing to put in two percent of your paycheck. Right. Or you know, either on an annual basis or a monthly basis. Yeah, most people put in like five. So if you get seven. if you get paid a thousand dollars a week and you put in two percent, two percent of a thousand is twenty. So then the village you'd put in twenty, the village would put in twenty. At two percent. Two. That's a thousand bucks. So the village every year would be brought a thousand bucks. And then you put in a thousand dollars. Thousand four. On a four fifty seven. So if you don't put nothing in, you don't get nothing. pay nothing. Yeah. That's I guess that to me the four fifty seven that seemed minor. I can't I thought I thought it was fifteen hundred bucks out of a thousand, but I can't believe it. So they put in five thousand dollars. Right. No. And so, it, 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 so it would be I'll do that. Fifty thousand. So if if an employee is earning if an employee is earning say sixty thousand dollars a year and they want that's eighteen hundred. That's eighteen hundred. That makes sense. Yeah. So then the village that's if they're doing three percent. The village would also match that three percent of eighteen hundred, mm -hmm. not three percent of eighteen hundred, which is smaller. It's the full eighteen hundred. Correct. Yeah. That, that makes more sense when you said it that way. Right. Yeah. So out of sixty thousand dollars, it's not about if it matches. Want to look into that more on a four fifty seven? Okay. So you're telling me because if you take the 457 and you put X amount of dollars in, I'm thinking if if you put in saying ten thousand dollars into the 457, a three percent match means I only have to match three percent of that ten thousand you put in there, not your wages. No, nope, that's three percent of wage. Okay, that's what the 457 does. Right. Because it like well, what happens if he doesn't put nothing in? Then nothing. Then, 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 then no, nothing. It's just a, it's just a basically it's a. It's an employee investment. It's it's through MERS, but I could go to I could go to the bank or something and do the same thing, thing pretty much. Yeah. Like Shane said, it's very similar to a four oh one K. So mm -hmm. if, if an employee annual took in three percent of their annual wage, then the village would also put in three percent of their annual wage for that employee. Three percent of their annual wage. So if they put in but if they put village, less than that. If they do two, then the village would do two. If the, if they did one, the village would do one. If they do none, the village does none. Mm -hmm. But if they do five, the village can only go up to three. Three. Right. I I understand that. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. I that, thank you for making that clear. Okay. So now we're on page forty-four, uniform and safety. So we already changed this. This the handbook wasn't changed. We have seven hundred dollars. Each year per DPW guy out in the workplace with the coats, the boots, the gloves, the hats. How much? Seven hundred dollars per employee outside. DPW guys. So that makes them wear their sports and steel toe work boots and the coats, hats, boots, gloves, yep. whatever. Any the bathroom could still work. Boots around. And you have to find the sale for 160 bucks. Oh yeah. You, you know, so yeah. Yeah, yeah and I've got bad feet. I have to buy good boots. <laughs> you, you could easily go off for seven hundred dollars. Oh yeah. Boots. Yeah. And, uh, Plus, you know, car hearts. You know, you got to have something for the winter time. We generally buy, you know, like a reflective jacket or something like that. Jacket, and, yeah. And, yeah. and then there's the next one. Oh, yeah, 
So everyone able to get shirts, jackets, etc. with one little logo. So what, what we did is, because of our picnics, and we, we actually, they actually done some of that. We're the, as long as we had logos from the village of Waterville, we, we spent money on some t-shirts. What's the t-shirts? Yeah, there was a bunch of t-shirts. We didn't do the t-shirts, we did the t-shirts. But we just wanted it, if, if when we do these picnics, we have to do it in front of the council. So I, at this point, I just put my in here just saying, Everyone able to get shirts, jackets, etc., with whatever the logo. I don't. At that point, the girls in the office, or we've done it with the council approval when we have the picnic, or the fireman's steel day, which we don't have anymore, or something with Josh Rocky with um, the Jeep takeover or something, where we the town where we could hand out shirts or jacket or minimum terms of that. Like downstairs or cold, we have a jacket that has one with the logo and a couple of buttons. Yeah. And then if we have a community picnic, we have those shirts too. Gotcha. Thursday, I've actually I, I used some of my clothing allowance to buy like regular T-shirts and regular hoodies to wear. And Thursday, I've got somebody coming to pick up. I've got a box full of clothes. They're going to go put the Waterville logo on them for me. They're actually a friend of a friend. I can get prices on that. You should click it. Yeah, that's what they use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, they're fairly reasonable. I'm supplying my own t-shirts and sweatshirts. I can get a price on what it would cost for t-shirts and hoodies. And that way, of like if somebody's coming up to work for a picnic or something, and they, I think they should be dressed in a, like, almost be like a staff shirt, you know, like mm -hmm. a. And we've already done that. We just, the handbook's not been changed. So. Do we, do we have, did you order t-shirts and sweatshirts? We no, did it. When, I wanted to get the approval first. Okay. But we did it with like Mel. Mel. Yep. Willis was here and and Carmen because we fed the people up always when everything yep. before before COVID. Yeah. Is what we did this. So at that yeah. point, I don't, I don't know. So would you I, just I, be ordering like various sizes in bulk so that way they'd be available to people or? Yeah. Well, I know some of the Lions Club's going to help um, pass out food. Mm -hmm. So it's each year if we want a tire of what we want that we can use for handouts. The village of Orville have local on for an event of some sort. Or even like a wedding event that we're going to be spotted for people to do the 4 k one and go oh, look. There's you didn't even have them out as prizes or something like that. Man, I'd take mm -hmm. them. Somebody give me a hoodie, I'd take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so talking about the family. Yeah, yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just feel like that's something that wasn't part of that. <laughs> yeah, that never happens here. <laughs> I mean, on that point, though, I mean, if it's simply an identifier, wouldn't it be more cost effective to just have like reflective vests that are, are unisized that live in the office and whatever the logo say staff? Oh, can do that. So, yep, yeah, I'm okay with that. And like you got the vest with Billy Gordon on, or are they just green? We just got the no. Ones. You can order them like that. Well, we, we got. Book. I seen you guys had some new ones. We got, but I didn't. I didn't have them lettered, but okay. It just cost more to have them lettered, but I like I said, I found it's my son's girlfriend's sister that's got a cricket, and they've got the heat press and all that stuff. They they make t-shirts and sweatshirts and stuff like that. So I want to have. Village Loverville logo on my stuff, so I'm just going to pay for it, mm -hmm. you know, to have it put on on the clothes I bought with my clothing allowance. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yep. See if she would consider doing some extra. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I kind of, I kind of told them I said, you know, we've got like five council members and we've got two office staff and we've got three other DPW workers, so you know, it could be, you know, I don't know anything about using a cricket. Mm -hmm. Josh, have you, have you ever worked with any of those vendors that offer, like, not embroidery, but branding of pens, shirts, and stuff? And, like, usually they're like employee stores where people yeah. can go and purchase stuff. Have you ever worked with anybody like that? Yeah, I've quite a few of them over the years. I haven't talked to Jordan, too. Uh, right. And I was nice. wondering if, it, if we set up like an online store, one, it would you know, make it available to the public. So if people wanted their own t-shirts and sweatshirts that say Weberville because they have community pride, that's great. 
And then on an individual basis, if an employee wants a sweatshirt or t-shirt from said website, then there's some sort of allowance in there allowing, you know, to help pay for that so it's not out of their own pocket if it's for village use. I'm just, I'm worried that, you know, we're all different sizes is, you know, if we order 10 shirts that are smalls and nobody's a small or medium or whatever, they're just gonna sit around collecting dust and it's just wasting money. No, I think it should be, you should, we should have like an order sheet, like Sam wants yeah. this, this, and this, and oh, this, yeah, this is like a yearly order sheet or something. Yeah, no, I don't think you need to constitute that in your handbook. I mean, that's something as a council you guys can, you know, right. Jessica says, hey, I want to get a sweatshirt with a rubber ball on it or whatever, but we're downstairs, yeah. it's a little chilly. I'm sure you guys would be like, okay. Yeah, go back to the local. I, it doesn't matter to me. I mean, okay. Everybody's got this page with the. Everybody's got this page that we got from Scott, yeah. our lawyer, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to page one again. After you guys heard my my program that I said. So what what is people? So now I'll let you guys talk. Number eleven. Um, How's everybody feel just getting rid of 2 dash 11? Yeah. The removing mileage. Yeah, yeah the, the I, I agree. Court, get rid of that. Yeah. No. What, what do you think on 2.11 of the residency? We just get rid of the mileage. I agree. The guy wants to fly in with a helicopter. I agree. Okay. So, there we go. All right. And then um, number two on page 12, if we put in there that the hour can be exercised with approval of the supervisor or the president. Correct. Because of an event. And we could put dentist, doctor, your kids got stitches. What's their way think? How do you think on that? Supervisor or approval. An event that. You're, somebody had something going on that was. I, I actually do it with the, the sheriff's department. Chris had something going on, and I said, "Well, just come in earlier, mm -hmm. or put more hours in that you're not getting in, and then then you can have that one hour off." But what do you think on that, Sam? With lunch, I, right. and I get what you're saying. I'm, as far as I'm fine. You're already doing it with her. I'm uh, fine with it as long as long as it's supervisor approval, and I don't. Not to make this onerous, but the only sticking point I may have is, you know, to cover an employee's late arrival to work is there should be something to make it clear that, you know, you can't be 15 minutes to work or an hour late to work every day knowing that, oh, I just won't take my 15 minute or I won't take my lunch. It has to be pre prior approved. Yeah. Right. So something yeah. like that's a supervisor or president. Right. Yeah. On exercising your lunch hour. Brad, can I make a statement? Mm -hmm. What would you like? Um, on, on what you're talking about there, is that for their lunch period only? Because the state does say you have to take a break every four hours, but it doesn't say you have to take a lunch at a certain time. So I, I don't know if you know if they want an hour and a half. I don't know if they can take that hour and a half by working through their breaks also. Oh, no. Right. I'm just counting the lunch hour. And, okay. and like Tammy, she takes a half hour for lunch, and then the other half hour she cleans our... Right. Yep. So... And as long as it's by supervisor approval, I mean, it's, it's up to the supervisor then to abide by state law that they're, they're not right. knowingly allowing an employee to violate that. Right. You guys need to come up with you won't have it. Right. right. And there's times that Shane's got the documentation of the guy exercising that without my approval just because of not being able to get a hold of me or I just, the guy took half of his, you said, because I read him after I do your guy's hour sheet and I see where Greg got time off or Matt was sick. Or, so these sheets are being made. So it's just, if somebody's going to do this, it's got to be in the event of, there's an event versus just being late. Right, yeah, and I, it's, it's hard for me because like the staff that we have here, I, I generally start 5.30. There's times when I'll be 
working and here comes Max and Greg and Brian and at six o'clock and they don't start till seven. <laughs> These guys are always early. So I don't, but I get it you, on down the road, you don't know who you're gonna have for employees. Right. Mm -hmm. But I am not for just showing up late and that's, that's not prior approval. Right. No, I'm pretty sure what he was saying too is that the state, I don't know if the state of the Fed, but the employment law is that, yeah, you have to have a 15 minute break every four hours. Yep. It's mandated, so obviously they can't just take their whole lunch hour, like, because that would obviously be illegal. Yeah, yeah they could take a 15 minute break then, and then, yeah. and then probably the 15 minute break in their lunch at the end of the day. Right, yeah. So it would actually be 45 minutes. That, yeah. Okay, we're all clear on that? Yep. How about Mr. Lawyer Scott Gould? Uh, yeah, I've got to go. Okay. All right, so then how's everybody on the footwear? No, I wasn't going to say that. No, open for No slippers in the shop. Correct. <laughs> what do you think, Sam? Sorry. I'm fine with that. Um, I don't mind. The, the tennis shoes, the Skechers, they were nice shoes. Yeah. And, are there signs at the DBW building saying steel toes required in this area? No, no, because I, I we just do work shoes. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it falls under that guideline. No, but I know it's kind of a tangential thought, but it, from a liability standpoint, it might not be a bad idea to put up a five dollar sign that, you know, once you walk into the shop, you should have steel toes on. Yeah, well, most of them are going to composite now, so. Or yeah, or you know, some sort of safety toe shoe. Yeah, safety toe shoes. Most of them are like these shoes here. They got something in the front of it. It's not mm -hmm. probably steel, but right. Some, some sort, sort of safety. Right. I'm, I'm just trying to think of, you know, changing this. I know it's directed towards office employees, but I don't want it to open up right. issues with DPW workers. Not yeah. not that there are any today. But I I don't want to wear open door shoes anyway. No, <laughs> I don't want you to be here. <laughs> I'm wondering if I extend them for the council members, too. I look like I could. So, number <laughs> 17, with the breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the, the only thing is, is Scott Gould mentioned that you probably get a dinner for 20 bucks versus 25. Or, or that's pessimistic, right? Or you've got an idea, maybe? Oh, no. I have no idea. I mean, as the, as the amount of money, I just put, I think, um, yes. as, at the discretion of Miss Valley, I. Yeah. I didn't want to throw you in the bus. Oh, no, I, I'm under there, but you don't have to be there. No, no, I, I didn't know. I, so you're saying 10, 15, 25? I was thinking for breakfast and lunch, 15 bucks. It's always like 13.80 or $13. I don't see anything less than $15 for breakfast, lunch, but dinner I put 25 and I seen somewhere that somebody had $20. So um, just want to make sure what people thought of that if I was being too generous. Was that just per diem? Like you get paid regardless? Or do you, you have to receipt? No, you can't then put a receipt in. Oh, okay. that's where we receipt it up to okay. exceed if yeah. you go to the council. Okay. That's what yeah. I wonder. Cause well, dude. I, I know a lot of my friends that work for big companies that they get a per diem pay and they just go, you know, back when somebody had their $5 football on, they yeah. just go that and just pocket that, which is fine. Oh, if, if you want to be, <laughs> whatever yeah, you want. I have been professionally traveling 20 plus weeks a I agree. year for the past decade. Yep. I agree with your limits. I mean, lunch, mm -hmm. lunch and breakfast under ten dollars ain't gonna happen. In that. And the other way to look at this is not a per diem, but a, a daily limit. Um, and, and then that allows the employee some discretion of you know, look, look, I I don't eat breakfast every day, and that's me personally. Well, maybe I want to have a nicer lunch because that's how I spread out my my food intake for the day. So most places are usually between 60 and $75 a day. So if you don't eat breakfast and want to spend $30 on lunch and 45 on dinner and to get your 75, you know, I, I don't know what the number should be for necessarily for the village, but that's another way to look at it. Well, the way I would that is, that's right yeah. this would be $55 that we're allowing for that day. Right. I agree. Just put it as daily. Yeah. They, they probably did the mm -hmm. breakfast, lunch, dinner thing because obviously there might be a conference that you leave from your house, mm -hmm. you know, and go for the day. Right. So you're only really at lunch and dinner. Of well, it also that, helps too I mean, with with travel. If it's a daily limit, it is 
but what if you stop at a gas station and get a bag of chips and a water? Well, is that my lunch or is that my dinner? Right. You know, it just it just goes towards your daily 60, 65 dollar allowance. Wow. Right. So what do they give you? Do they give you 55 or 65? Or I don't have a limit. Oh. oh, you don't have one? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sounds, any, hey, that sounds pretty good. Can I add a $50 off the day? Nine for you? I think six. I think six is probably reasonable. Nine, Most places are between 60 and 70. So we'll put item number four daily. $60 daily for oh, well, beverages. If you want a food. snack during the day. Right. If you want a snack or your water, you know, your whatever you drink, I mean, well, that's not that. cigarettes or adult beverages. Right. right, you know, you still have to have a receipt with proof that you know you were buying food and not model tickets. You can right. put in there too, you know, no alcoholic beverages. Yep, we'll just put with a receipt. I'm pretty sure that's, that's standard. pretty standard, right? right. Yeah. And like I said, you know, you don't eat. I'm a person. I don't eat breakfast. I don't you know, so for me to have a ten dollar lunch at a drive through and then. You know, go to Texas Roadhouse, have a you know, a decent steak, not an expensive cut, and right. drink. That's easily a thirty, thirty-five dollar meal, but are you that's all I'm spending for the day. Right. Oh, daily six months. There we go. So page eighteen on harassment. All we're gonna do is put policy of village where harassment in the workplace will not be allowed or tolerated by anyone. So I just that's if you got it. We had one instance of it at the post office. But another one was at the residence, so um, years ago, before your time. So it just we're just gonna put in there by anyone. That way, it doesn't have to be in between the employees or uptown office. It's, it's actually the residence of the village where we go. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, in the the work. Work cancellation number seven through eight. This section is still under review. Are we skipping over six again? Did I skip one? I'm sorry. The, the concealed carry. Oh, I'm sorry. Harassment. I don't think I'm there yet. I'm not there yet. Well, I'm doing 20 page 27. On yeah. So we went from number five, which is on 18. Number six is page 21 regarding concealed carry. Oh, yeah, my things taken together. Okay, yep, I jumped over it. But. So, seven, eight, so. The section is still under review for. Work cancellation. I don't know why I overtime be <clears throat> so somehow we wanted to try to address in the event of normal work activity must be canceled or unable to be performed due to un Controllable circumstances, natural disaster, power outage, bad weather, etc. Workers are dismissed without pay if normal work hours cannot resume within an hour. No. Dismissed without pay. Then suggested change if snow days are passed in the event normal work activities may be canceled or unable to perform due to uncontrollable circumstances, natural disaster, power outage. Language. So the same. Oh, if all their snow days have been used up, normal work hours cannot resume within an hour. So, I guess Jessica, I don't know anymore. If, as far as snow days for the village of Orville, I say no. And then, I I think one time in the nine years I've done this that we had power outage where it was just for an hour or two hours. I don't remember it all day. Um, so, so when it says this section under review, I, I don't see any reason to have any. Which one was the section? They move it. 
So we have, we'll just leave it as is the work cancellation program. I'm not going to pay for snow days or have, uh, and that's, I mean, with the council understand what I'm thinking, but if, uh, I mean, if we had a tornado come through here, or somebody said that that was going to happen, but there's a lot of times, there's a couple times where the weather was bad at 6 30, 7 o'clock in the morning, but by 9 9 30, the roads are wet. You could come in. You'd be late, but you still could come in. So, well, I think at that point, it's it's up to your discretion as the president to say, you know, hey, if the roads are terrible, if you wait. don't want to come in until 9 when yes. it's safe, fine. Yep. But to say you're going to get paid to stay home, no. I still got to make it in. Yeah, right. Good. The snow days I was talking about is when we had, remember the bad winter we had, and the state police actually said, do not get on the roads, mm -hmm. stay home. That's what I was talking about. Gotcha. That's where I was going. So if we had something like that, they're telling you, stay home. Do not get on the road. I know the a person, if they've got the news on, well, we know better. Right, but I, that's where I was going with with those right. snow days. Right. Because that's a whole different situation there when you see right. you have the police. I think it's few and far enough between that in an instance like that. I, you know, I don't think it's unreasonable for Shane's guys to reach out to him or Tammy and Jessica to reach out to Brad to just have a conversation about what do we want to do here. Mm -hmm. you know, do, do, do we wait it out? Do we close the village office? And if the determination is, yeah, you know, we're getting three foot of snow between 8 a.m. and 7 p.m., village office is closed. Then it's up to the employee as to whether or not they use sick or vacation time to make up for lost pay. The frequency at which this is going to happen is so low. I, I still brought it up, though. I, no, I, I hear you. So my copy page, I keep going. I have page 18, and on the other page is 27. So that's why you keep saying I'm jumping over to seal weapons mm -hmm. because 27 is copied on the back page of my 18. So oh, my friend. Yeah. So then, so I'm at, I'm on to seal weapons. We need a new printer. Mine is yep, there. You go. The same way. <laughs> so your fault is the printer's fault. <laughs> the printer did it. What do we think on concealed weapons? I think we should just remove that section. I don't I don't think it's wise to draw any unnecessary attention towards verbiage saying, oh yeah, employees can do this, but I don't think that we should restrict people's Second Amendment rights. I agree. So if we just get rid of that section, it's not, so, say, not saying you can, but we're not saying you can. If they have a license to carry. Well, well, there's already they, laws for if you're carrying without one, mm -hmm. that's well beyond the village's jurisdiction. Yep. You know, there's so much crazy stuff yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm going to do that. you think? Well, the only thing I would advise is that uh, we double check with the insurance providers to make sure that we don't compromise any. I mean, may, they may be operating under the assumption that we have a no gun policy. And so I would just want to check on those things. Yeah, because yeah, you're so great to pay the insurance and then they don't want to pay us. That's sure, I mean, just imagine somebody years. got hurt, and they'd be like, whoa, we oh. thought you guys didn't have any guns on the campus, you know, I mean, that, it, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I guess that's my job to be apparently. Yep. I mean, Jessica said, you, you looked into it, and they said it wouldn't affect anything. Well, as long as you get the green light from someone other than me on that, that's... I have to make sure it's in writing and not just verbiage. And what did they say? Especially for the insurance companies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not not always in writing. Always so I can't get in writing if you want. We probably should. Yep. Yeah, we yeah, should. Bad. Just ask, yeah, at the very least, email confirming that. Put it in the files. Yeah. 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 That way they can't come back and say, oh no, I did not send oh, it or say, right. Right. You know, exactly. I got the copy yeah, in the file. No, we have it in writing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they have, if you look at the uh, back, it's not like exact, but it shows gun regulations, local government fact sheet from I don't know what the gun sell. I saw that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's write that in. So then page 34, I think I'm right, I'm going to keep this in right, number nine, the holidays, everybody's good with the holidays? And do we really need to add MLK Day? Does Williamson have MLK Day? 
I don't know. A lot of times they switch it between either they do President's Day or MLK Day. That's kind of like the. Do we have President's Day offices? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Doesn't have a calendar. Yeah. Like that. yeah, I mean that's uh, every school is different with that. Mm -hmm. That's usually how they. So do the that. only other holiday we have that's not in here is the MLK. Right, but they're doing President's Day, yeah. so and the day of the Thanksgiving. Exactly. Well, geez, and then when will you get one in Pulaski Day? True. No, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm fine with the holidays as they are. I am too. So then if Shane got up there in his years and he was able to retire and he can draw Social Security and he's here that long and having a great time, um, if he's got that, and I got, I don't know how to word it, but the, you call it PTO, personal? PTO bank? Yeah, yeah the PTO bank. I think the PTO bank's kind of cool, actually. Um, are, you, are you talking number 10? Yep. Okay. Because it relieves some of the pressure off from paying for each hour of each time they're over time or if they do the PTO they can bank it and then what the sheriff's department if I'm correct on this I, they can bank up because I, I talked to Matt and he said they bank up to no more than 90 days mm -hmm. so then you could retire like in January and then you got February, March, April and you still get paid because he had that PTO time bank. So, or like with my daughter's company, because she delivers home orthopedic devices to patients, mm -hmm. she's able to collect PTO through Army at work today. The patient was supposed to call her back, never did. Therefore, she wouldn't have gotten paid today. She can use one of her PTO days okay. to, to get her paid. Then they get her mileage, but mm -hmm. she'll get her eight hours a day. Oh, I see. So is this in, adi in addition to changing the PTO allotment for vacation days based on how long you've been employed? Or are you suggesting we keep our current structure for vacation days and add the PTO back? The number two. Okay, so you would not. Okay, so this first chart here, where if you're 20 years or more, you get 20 days, and you would get a PTO bank instead of more vacation time up front. Isn't that what we talked about, Shane? Where, how, how was that again? <laughs> uh, so I think. Is the question, are we talking about adding a PTO bank instead of increasing the amount of vacation days you start with? We, we, the no, I think that's, that was that's a separate issue. It's a separate issue. Okay. The number two that you mentioned was what? Like, okay, everything so stays the same, but if they have the, the PTO personal time on, because what happens, like, He'll come in like on a Sunday. Him and I were in here at uh, 3.30 to 5.30 on a Sunday. He never wrote it down. He came in from Stockbridge and yeah. him and I were both working on So that would just be PTO time. Then. Right. So basically like a comp time thing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Comp yeah. Right. Okay. But you're, I'm, I need the knowledge from the council mm -hmm. to know how to reward that. Because I everything works great and every year they get 3% increase. And then nobody can ask for a wage increase without the recommendation so, from the president. So that leaves us alone. Everybody keep bothering us like that. But I wanted to have it so that somebody come in and they check the water main break and went back home. They didn't have to put on Sunday. They didn't have to come like break come in and check the water main break. Mm -hmm. and we didn't have to fix it till Monday. You put an hour in, so it goes to PTO time versus. Uh, yeah, I, I get that. I, I'm trying not to confuse this by talking about two different things, but okay. I think. They're kind of dependent on each other, right? Is I think that based on how long you've been here, we need to change slash increase the amount of vacation days you're eligible for 
I'm also in favor of a PTO bank, but I don't agree with a PTO bank of three months. I just know Matt must have had like probably 10 years or something to get that many. I don't know how many years it was. Like 25 years out of it. However many years it was in. Yeah. You're right. I, 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 for two years, he's already got 90 days in. I, I get what you're saying. Right. Yeah. Because, like, you know, so for somebody who's been here less than a year and they don't get any vacation unless it's granted by the president, I, anywhere you go, you're going to get 14 days vacation. First year? The moment you walk in the door. All right. And that was changing. It's almost seven. Time. Days. What do you yeah. talk about? The, the ceiling by federal days. codes, uh, public employees engaged in other work may not accrue more than 240 hours of compensatory time for hours worked. So 240 is the absolute ceiling. So nope. you're talking 90? What's 90. 240 hours? Yeah. What are those days divided by eight? 30 days? Uh, 30 days? Yeah. So 240 divided by what? Eight. eight hours. So it'd be, it'd be 30 days. Three days, not ninety. So, yeah. so we can't go above thirty days. We can't go above thirty. I don't have a problem. That's the federal law. I, I think what, what I said, and I don't know who did the. Did you do the updates on this? What? Well, I didn't. I didn't just. I put my. What the current one was and what? Oh no, that. Was, I so that. I, I the, the second chart is what I suggested of zero to four years is ten days. Yep. And that pretty much eliminates the the one above it, the vacation time thing, because that's included in the. See what I mean? Paid vacation time plans for paid vacation leave after. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, uh, I don't know what's uh, number ten. Yeah, this one, this one, that would one. be pretty much eliminated, yeah. and then just be PTO based. Yeah. You, where you would get zero to four years, you'd get your your ten days of vacation, mm -hmm. and you'd get your twelve sick days. Right. So it's basically eliminating that chart up above. Right. Yeah, because the chart up above is what it is today. Well, yeah, and this page back here, and then it zero to four moved to the suggested change zero to four ten days, five to nine fifteen days. Mm -hmm. That pretty much eliminates that because it's all included in this down here. I agree. So uh, in the PTO base one. Limitation 7.02, the basic. See the 12 plus 10 equals 22 from 0 to 4. Right, right. That's basically, oh. it's got this chart included into that. Right. But it's just meshing the sick time. Gotcha. With the I, vacation time. And I then you can, then time. you could accrue uh, like half time. Like say we, when we came in on a Saturday and worked a couple hours, I wouldn't have to be paid for that. I could count it and put it in my PTO bank. Right. But we can only do up to, what is it, 30, 30, 30 days. working days, 240 hours. Yeah, whatever. whatever. So you guys, you got this? Did you see this? Mm -hmm. In your packet there? Is yeah, that I, I just realized that Shane was referencing this chart down at the bottom. Yeah. So yeah no, I'm working on this, exactly where we're at with yeah. Shane. This is what Shane's talking about right here. Is this what you're talking about, Shane? This is right here. Like that is? Yeah. This basically, this, this right here has this in it. Okay. Yep. I agree. It's just, a, it's just putting everything into one bank so that you just got yep. time off. So yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I'm not sure what the, mm -hmm. or left five days to carry over. Yep. So then, if we did that, then we'd get rid of. Where's that? Yeah. Where's our thing prior to the was old, old school. And this will be new. Okay, it's just four minutes in my career. Where's this at? That is this. Yeah, so right. Hmm. So this broken yeah, it's format. Yeah, it's formatted differently. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like this. This? Yes. Okay. I think I'm okay with that. So, we have to do this. so then it would get rid of all of this. Um, Pay vacation here. Mm -hmm. Just go over and put this in place. Okay. Here. So zero, zero to four years, you start with 10 days. 
But you have 12 well, sick days. So you have 22 days. You have 22 days total right. that yeah. you can use. Right. They would have to get get paid for the overtime because you can only take thirty days. Well, right, right, right. If you were on disability. You know, the only thing that the, the PTO had done was cool was if the senior citizen should be able to break up to some 32 hours of bank time. No, 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 you got a vacation. I'm not trying to understand how that fits in the bill. I don't know. I don't know. So if you took 30 days, you stayed 30 days for that. Right. But to me, this sounds like. If you're zero to four years, you walk in the door with 12 sick days. And well, where do I am? Oh, well, I don't know. I don't know. PTO bank we is still a separate given, thing where if Shane comes in at four o'clock in the morning for his cell for two we hours, given that four hour time, he can put that in the PTO bank yeah. separate from now. That could go on forever. Yeah. Um, yeah, I started sure. out because this this is actually hired in for the state. They yeah. earn ten days off and they earn four hours. They get sick. Vacation. They work twelve days and they get sick. And every that should be separate than five years. Yeah, I got the, the law says you got the employer has when to maintain the law time. That's four times. Right. Yeah, because this is not yeah. separate. Okay. This is not compensatory. Yeah. My cap was well, yeah, that's, yeah. right because if Shane were here for thirty years, because we can do that. Yeah, thirty days. But there's been he would have 52 no, days total was, separate from his uh, compensation. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 52 that days, and you say you only have 30 days oh, of PTO that was, that was well, PTO Not this. What they're doing is they're taking PTO oh. vacation, sick, and personal time. Oh, just PTO? Yeah. yeah. Might get my yeah, terms mixed up too. Yeah, right. Yes, I'm, thinking of, I'm thinking of the bank. Yeah, yeah. PTO bank. You say the municipality said it might be 30 days. Yeah, 240 hours. 240 hours, which is 30 days. Which now is PTO. Chart down at the bottom of this page that you'd put together that shows. Oh, I didn't put it together. <laughs> <laughs> that, that the AI put together. Uh, this is separate from. Com how do you say it again? Compensatory. Compensatory. Comp time. Comp time. Thank you. Um, so I think Brad and I are in agreement, and maybe Deborah as well, that adopt this PTO policy mm -hmm. in addition to. A comp time policy, which is a maximum of 240 hours or 30 days by state law. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. I think we figured it out. 
Because I really like the Pacific Coast. Does that make sense? Yes, okay. it yeah. does. I'm that's, fine that's, with that. that's exactly the way I I had it in my head. So okay, just couldn't <laughs> articulate that. You look like you're more willing to listen to your input. You look like I, I just can't understand the difference between comp time and paid time off. So paid time off is to me that seems like it's the same thing because it's, you it's, get you get vacation time, you get sick time, you come in and work, but you don't put it on your pay your pay time sheet. That's comp time. Okay. So what's the difference between your paid time off? Bank and your comp time bank. So paid time off is earned based on years of service. Comp time is earned based on hours Actually, gone above yeah. and beyond. Yeah. So paid time off is your you vacation can, time. Right. You can work your entire career not comp get any comp time. You right. Know, you could just work your forty hours. But if over the course of your career, by our policy, you are you're gaining more time off. So that's the difference between your PTO and your Comp time is that yeah, okay. yeah. Comp time is just for for hours worked out of the normal mm -hmm. scope of your but municipalities show hours. But it's not it's not it's not driven by a guarantee that well you've been here fifteen years so we're gonna give you comp time. No, you're getting paid time off time by your legacy, your time here. But if right. you work right. above out in the yeah. field because of something happened, right. then you start banking it. Right. So then I can either get paid for it or I can put it in my PTO yeah. bank. Well, comp bank. Comp It'll be a comp bank. So you really got to run the bank separately. Right. You really okay. have two banks. All right. right. Yep. 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 So, so like Sunday when when we had a phone went off saying that the well wasn't running and, and with the water tower wasn't getting fed. So Sunday Shane came in and I went in with him and we spent two and a half three hours getting there and we had to manually do it. So instead of writing up a sheet and having double time, he just put regular time PTO into his the three hours he was here on personal time off. Not oh, on comp time. On comp time. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when that happens or yeah. So personal time off is earned vacation time. Right. Okay. Yep. Yep. Earned vacation time and sick time. Right. And you can use interchangeably. And then, gotcha. then you have a comp bank where if I work two hours over, I instead of getting paid for that, I can put it right. in the right. comp bank. Gotcha. So with that all set, and I'm pretty fresh with it, and it sounds like the council's getting there saying that we need to give you these changes like this, the next time that we meet, I think we can have a super approval on something that's legit so we get our hands on mm -hmm. straightened around. And given that this has already been addressed on the federal level, this comp time issue, there's got to be a template out there. I mean, I don't think i got to build the thing from scratch. I think we can... Right. You got to reinvent the wheel. Right. Just make sure we have the proper language. So. I think that I think that's it. So number twelve. I just I'm I got I got can you say that? No, I'm just saying we're moving on. I just have four of these here that I've highlighted and drawn lines through and trying to come up with a plan and look things up. So I um so we we removed it on page thirty five, we removed number eleven. Yep. And we removed number twelve. Um, and we left 13, right, Sam? Uh, well, we would have to increase sick days to 12 based on what we just agreed with. Okay. All right. That's 12. And then we did freedom of pay, which made sense that you brought to my attention five days, nine consecutive. Because, you know, immediately somebody went away, and then it's two weeks later, they the very right? Yep. Five days consistent. Yep. On page 15, all we did is took out where it said he or she will turn jury duty paycheck. It's a whole $15. Yeah. That out of there. And then um, number 16, which is on page 40, it's 90 days, not 30 days. And that's just because of the time. Back then it was 30. Now it says 90 days. Page 43, 17, uh, are vested after six years. Um, with the 3% match to the 457 program. If you feel okay with that. I, that was something that I was green about, and I'm okay. I don't think that's super exceeding a lot of the other things that we did, but 
where we can hear the building where it should be happening. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, they got to invest more. For employers who offer 401ks, which I know this is not that, a 3% match is pretty standard in most situations that have that. And I think if... I think it's a good carrot for employees to consider c contributing more to their retirement benefits. And yep. it, it's a nice thing to be able to do an offer. Yeah, three percent is is normal. Yeah, I have no, I have no idea. So, well, in a four hundred one k setting, three percent is pretty minuscule by today's yeah. standards. Uh, it's, it's usually between five and six. I mean, you, usually it's you know a fifty percent match up to three percent, you know, or a hundred percent up to three percent, and fifty percent up to six percent. And there's so many different ways you can structure the the percentage to so I guess entice people. So why is three percent normal for four fifty seven? And well, I don't know. That's what we're here. it's minimal. It goes three percent to ten percent. You right. can go anywhere between right. three and ten. Right. That I didn't. I didn't yeah. read that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm open to suggestions from the council or anybody else of should it be greater than three? Stay at three, greater than three. Three percent sounds good. Yeah. Well, let's leave it that way because we've got the other program. Yep. Okay. And then we'll see how it works. Okay. So, sir, you, so I, at that, all of them that we just did and went through here, I'm going to hand this to Scott Gould so he can take my scratch notes and apply this into the, the handbook. And we're good with the $700 allowance for clothing? Yep. Okay. And then we'll leave it alone. We can bring it to the council when we want uh, shirts and stuff for everybody. Uh, like you said, so we, we'll have like a thing made up with size shirts and stuff. So we don't have it where we got small down there that are four years old that nobody can wear. And picking on my size small. <laughs> I know. <laughs> small on my left side. Okay. Appreciate everybody's input. I do. It's stressful and that's if we wanted a paycheck to come and do it with a healthy hand. I don't know how good that was going to work, but it was kind of nice that we got it worked out. All right. We got Northern Pump and Well approval valves for the wells one, two, and three. $6,681. I recommend the council we approve this not to exceed the $6,681. So moved. And the second. And this is the valves that make them slowly so we already did it. I'm sorry, but we had to. It was, it was either that or we were lose 180,000 gallons of water when they change out our water number. Second. So what so now we got a discussion. So we got a second. So what this does to understand the it slowly speeds up. So if anybody turned their water on yesterday morning around 8.30 and it slowed right down almost to a stop and then come back up, it's because the pumps have got now variable speed where before they started up, they shot, and then we, we broke water mains. So all three of these pumps got new clutch rev up that revs up to the pressure. So then we were able to not lose so many gallons when they drain our water tower because they only have one. So when that happened, now when people want water, which what happened, I'm sure somebody drew out a big amount of water off, so it pulled from Graham Road, slowed it down, and once the motor sped up, it repressurized the system, everybody got their water. We went, if we had it the other way, it would have been a pressure relief valve out there, manual valve, with Shane and I out there watching us make a lake out there by the water tower, 180,000 gallons. Yeah, like two, two years ago, when we did it, we lost um, almost 700,000 gallons a day that we're pumping out just to keep pressure on the system. Yeah, now the way it is, with the, the pumps are running continuously, but the pumps slow down to where they're just pumping just to hold the pressure, and then when there's a draw, they, they speed up. Yeah. So this time when we did it, we only lost probably maybe 10 to 15,000 gallons a day, which it's not just the water, it's the chlorine that goes in it, it's the phosphate that goes in it, it's the wear on the pumps and everything else. So it's slow, even, even now it's slowly paying for itself. Yeah. And plus it doesn't, when the pumps kick on, it, it, it slowly ramps up, so it slowly starts putting my pressure in the system. If you don't have that on there, the pumps kick on and it gives a big water hammer out. And you can see right down on 
Pine Street and Summit, where when the pumps kick on, it finds the weakest spot, which is right there. I think we've had three or four right there mm -hmm. by that corner, and it just blows <laughs> water main right out. Yeah. We've replaced six foot sections of water main because of because of the water handling from the pumps. And, and with technology, we didn't have two years ago where we were able to do what we're talking about. What a lot of people did, oh, we're putting grand scan in the water tower. You know, you get somewhere else. You can, that's what a lot of other places do. They drain one water tower, keep the other one going, keep time, or their place. So I guess in one way, you think the money was spent incorrectly, but it, it's actually nice. I like it just because it doesn't hammer. Yeah, I'll hammer the water. I mean, the water main things are like Yeah, in a normal run, instead of taking two seconds for the for the pumps to be at full speed, it takes 12 now. So it just slowly ramps up, so it starts putting that pressure to it, so you're not having that big water hammer breaking those mains. I mean, so, it doesn't do it every time, but eventually, especially if you got a weak spot in there, it's going to find it. Okay. Yes. Candle? Yes. Walter? Yes. 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 Yeah, the northern part yeah, of us were table on that because the new control one. system. So yeah. point one. Okay, I'm sorry. What's that? No, go ahead. Um, the next one. We need to table it. Because we need to table it because that's just one of the quotes that I've got. I've got another quote and I'm waiting on one more. Um, so we'll it's just take be thirty grand. What's that? Probably gonna be thirty thousand. The other one is the other four I got is thirty, and I'm hoping this other guy comes in. So this panel is the size of a four by eight sheet of plywood, probably, right? Four by four, probably. Four by yeah. four, and it's got a hall. <laughs> it's filled full of. <laughs> and we were out there poking the buttons, and you, we were happy we had Shane because he went and pulled it off one circuit, put it on the other circuit, and it's worked ever since that moment. Yeah, but I don't know how long it's gonna work. <laughs> yeah. And then the, the people that we want to talk yeah. to about that panel, they're out of business. Yeah, they are out of business. And they were, the problem with that is they were out of just a suburb of Chicago. So anytime we had to have some work done to it, we had to pay for them to travel here, put them up, have them work on it. Last time we came, the guy said, I can't do nothing with this and I can't get parts for it. So hopefully it'll work. And it worked for a couple of years. And then now it's getting to the point where it's not working. And I mean, it's not a... I mean, like I said, when you've got to turn the water tower on and you've got to turn the water tower off, you're setting your clock and you're coming in every, you know, six to eight hours to, to do it. And it's, it's, it's not it's, a relaxing time in between those times you come in either because you're just waiting to, <laughs> waiting to come back in because you don't turn the pumps on, it doesn't fill that water tower up, people don't have water. That's not a good thing. So, so the way that was done years ago, it had an intent. So it's like a CB antenna that did the signal over to our DPW garage. That's how it gets the signal. Yeah. That's, you do that thing? I mean, the CB, on, I mean, it's like a, like a CB antenna on top of the top. Yeah, it's, uh, what are they, 900 hertz? I don't understand all that, but that's the public, yeah. public domains of 900 hertz. One of the quotes that this are is technical, they're talking about applying for an FCC license and putting in a base station so that we have our own Communication that's just for the water tower and the walls. Yeah. So, I think the 900 got sold off years ago. The what? The 900 spectrum got the government sold off years ago. Yeah, yeah. that's what we got. So, yeah. so <laughs> we found a real hacker that screw that whole thing up. And I don't know what the new one is. Eight, 800 or, or use it 2.4. Yeah, that five. Thing. Yeah, that might be still a, you know same thing. Wi-Fi user runs on both. Yeah, but just a higher signal. He said you'd have better communication between the between the different components and we wouldn't have to rely on telephone or cell signal or anything yeah. like that it'd just be us yeah okay special event for Matt memorial parade for the dlw um, i make a recommendation to the council that we approve this format for the dfw so moved second okay does it cost any money no all in favor say aye. 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 Those say sign. Passed. 2023 audit engagement letter contained here. You guys got a chance to see that. All we gotta do is what? Um, recommend that we continue. Don't take it. We just approve the letter. 
Thank you. So, recommend the council that they need to use the audit of Gatebridge Incorporation audit engagement letter of 2023 to continue our audit, which we're a month ahead of schedule. There's no cost to audit it. I know the charges to you. The first part is going to be asking us a little bit of information and all that stuff. So there's no cost on it. There's no cost on this letter at this time. It's just recommended that the council understands that we're using Gabriel Incorporation once again for the second opinion with Plant Grant to approve our audits to be in compliance with the state of Michigan. Okay. So I, I recommend to the council that we have the 2023 audit engagement letter to allow me to sign it and go forward and pass this on to the region for the It's going to be approved by the council to be able to look at it so that the same people we use for the last three, four years. Also, a little bit better questions. Well, no, let's talk about now. I'm I'm I mean, what are your thoughts on it? Are you happy with the service that they've been providing? Because I I feel like for the past four years, we always get, yeah, you guys are doing great. Yeah. And over the past four years, clearly we have not done so great. No. <laughs> but I don't think Gabriel was on that part. Gabriel's a couple of years. Yeah, Gabriel's plant ran the one that said that to us. And then right. they were wrong. But, but Gabriel's just been, you know, not it's keeping them a check, but they've been a second opinion. And the second true. opinion has always come back, oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're giving you a clean bill of health. True. I, I like it where you have Plant Moran do it for you. And you think that? Yeah, they right. can. Yeah. You have two. Yeah, they can do it. Yeah, so you got you got to pay a tool to right. give it to the state of Michigan. I think that's upside down. Yeah, because yeah, they want an independent auditor. Right. But so, yeah, if you want, if you want to try to find it, there's another place out of Basin that. Well, that's what I'm questioning is, is, is is it worth trying to find another independent auditor that. I mean, I'm just. I'd say if you guys are on the hat, I would. Right, I'm just not impressed with what, what, seen. what you have currently, and then maybe next year switch. The, the, yeah, they're a month and a half. That's huge. And, that was I mean, you figure they're going to be two weeks to, to find a place that you might not be able to get right out on. Right, but the, that's a good point. The hot seat that they always told me, Plant Moran, is their their collaboration with Cambridge and Corporation, which is over by Grand Rapids, was electronically immediate response back and forth how they collaborate their paperwork. So. That's what they told me immediately how to speed. That was what we used for the speedy of the audits. That once we did the plant ran and started cleaning up the audits, you're right. The first we did one year okay, the second year, then we got half they tell us we did great standard right here, and they turn around and said, Oh hey, by the way, we got a problem. Right. Well their fees are right there on page six. But but Gene, what's that? Their fees are right here on page six. So their fee is will not exceed fourteen thousand seven hundred and forty dollars, and that's for services will be at our uh, standard hourly rates plus out of pocket costs such as report, reproduction, word processing, postage, travel, copies, telephone, etc. Except that we agree that our gross fee, including expenses, will not exceed fourteen thousand seven hundred and forty dollars. Giving them the benefit of the doubt is, at least as far as I understand it, is, I mean, they're conducting an audit, but it seems like they're more auditing what Plant Moran does. So they, to give, giving them the benefit of the doubt, if Plant Moran says you're all good, and they're operating on information from Plant Moran that was less than stellar, it's not really on them. They just go, yeah, this, you know, third party opinion is the audit from Plant Moran looks good because Plant Moran said it was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they have to, I mean, they have to maintain their licensing and stuff. Like they're, you know, they're 
CPA certifications and all that stuff. So I mean, they can't. They have to make sure they see all the numbers and. Well, I'm sure. You know, that, I'm sure that they're seeing it, but it's not. Miles. I, I don't, I'm not under the impression that they are receiving the same data set and coming to their own separate conclusion yeah. as Plant Moran and making sure that things align is they're looking at Plant Moran's conclusion and making sure that it makes sense versus the numbers that were given to them. Yeah. Usually when they do the audit, or they go through everything that, like pretty much the whole year worth of yeah. expenditures okay. and they make sure that they were corrected and right put in the correct charter accounts and make sure there wasn't anything that was you know like one thing that always nailed on for the village was the cash receiving was not properly accounted for so really? yeah um but just stuff like that i mean it just it, they do a lot of more like procedural stuff and make sure that what's being done actually makes sense and right. adds up at the end so, I mean, they're kind of just almost like a glorified double checker. But yeah, and that's exactly what I mean. Is but I do agree with you because I mean, the, the auditors from since I've been involved with the, the village, you know, they on paper, if you read, I mean, it's been quite a while now, but you would read it and it's like, and they would come do their report and everything seemed hunky dory, but then you know, like actually see the numbers and they're like, that's not necessarily hunky dory in certain areas. Right. Well, they're, they're not, again, they're, I don't think that their job is to audit us and check us. Their job is to audit and check Plant Moran's audit. Oh, it is to check procedures and right. expenditures of the village. Yeah. And then obviously, right now, the village is paying Plant Moran to do the same thing, mm -hmm. but on a real time basis. Where obviously, with auditors, the state requires you to have that done every year. Right. So, I, I, I don't know. I think I think it's a valid point, but it's probably a little late in the game to change this year. I know Michelle was taking into account um, last year's audit. Was there? Mm -hmm. They even came and showed it to us. Um, <laughs> that, that, that was a task. We didn't get any check or any letter from the state. And then, um, but then the prior years were a joke. <laughs> right. Well, and I also understand that good not all the prop, not all the information or the proper information was being given to either party doing the audit. Right. Given the circumstances that they were under. Yep. But Cambridge last year, when we were doing it, they did do it all electronically. We were sending stuff back and forth pretty quick. I think that's how they were able to get the audit done on time. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Do this. I'll make a motion to approve the 2023 audit engagement letter with Gabe Richie Company. I second it. Back to exceed 14,740. Back to exceed 14,740. Yeah, I was just reading what was in the suggestion. Yeah, well, we cannot exceed 14,740. Yeah, I don't. Sorry, I'll let somebody wants to second the law. She did second. second. Oh, from we can discussion. Yeah, we can discussion. Yeah, and I think I don't know when the appropriate. I don't know when the appropriate time is to look for another service, but and, and I don't um, want to be in this situation again next year where we go. Oh well, we don't have a choice now. It's too late. This is how the audit goes. Yeah, it should be done. And, and, and Plant Moran, they're okay with it. They, they, they can pick anybody they would send it to. Right. Because right. they give us the one out of Mesa, too. Mm -hmm. Mesa, Michigan. Okay. Well, there's the Gabridge guy showed up on the last time we've seen. And they're supposed to start the audit approximately July 17th. And they're supposed to issue the reports no later than September 30th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Any more discussions? We're all good to go. Yeah. Yes, you're not. Roll call, please. So, yes. Yes. Walter. Yes. Yes. Okay, the special event from that one, Memorial Day. Any more on the recommendation for that? Make a motion to approve the special event permit 
You know, if it's a short term solution, if it's just a matter of something broken down, is maybe a, a car and a club car. <laughs> I mean, it seems kind of silly, but I, I want to talk to Stafford. A dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> Stafford's changed from Ingham County Sheriff's Department to their own department. So yeah. I have a little, little bit of experience with this. It's There's pros and cons to it. Um, would you like to wear a second hat? <laughs> Sounds like you have experience with both. Huh? Deputy. Well, didn't you not be sure that deputy wouldn't shut the person down and do it a problem? Or to my girls in the office? Uh, uh, Jim took care of that. Jim did? Yeah. Because we asked the deputy and the deputy didn't want to because he wanted mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you, have a, you have a lot of that going on. Yeah, actually, if you have your own department, you you have a really good chance to do a lot of good community policing with the schools and stuff like that. Um, they get to know the residents. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you, there, there are a lot of pros to it. Um, you know, the liability issue it takes on, you know, that's a lot of the money goes there, hiring quality staff, you know, it's, um, you know, a lot of the retirees, they're not looking to make, you know, $100,000 a year like, you know, they would if they had, that amount of time in with the sheriff's department or a larger, uh, larger department. So you can generally, I mean, as long as you pay fair, um, you can get some good employees. I mean, you're going to have employees out on training. You got to do. I mean, staff generally did quarterly um, shoots where you go, you know, uh, evals where you go out and do. We did when I was with Jackson. We did monthly. Um, where you go out and shoot that, you know, that cost ammunition, you know, which you can get through my deals. You can get through my deals. You also, um, state, yeah, state purchase has, uh, I can't even think of the name of it now, uh, Kevlar. Yeah, you gotta buy Kevlar, you know, you gotta buy all the equipment and stuff, but there's a place, uh, I think on the west side of Lansing where a lot of the stuff you can buy, um, a lot of your guns you can buy at cost, a lot of your bullets you can buy at cost, and stuff like that because you're a sheriff's department. And like Dan was saying, Homeland Security does have um, some grants for training for first responders, so that might alleviate some of the cost um, if we hired somebody like that. So, you know. Yeah, could you check in? Yeah, could you check in? Yeah. And I, I'm pretty sure they can deputize Sam and. Mm -hmm. Some other work here if we can break ties, why not, right? Mm -hmm. Give me a badge of the training, I'll do it. You can actually go through um, Jackson puts on a the city of Jackson puts on a reserve academy. Um, and we had people, I I sent people from Stockbridge through the Jackson Reserve Academy um, to work on Stockbridge Mason, um, different departments that were reserve officers, and that that actually helps a lot on a small department. Um, sometimes when you get into a bigger department, um, the, the officers in Jackson were great because they were so short staffed um, that they were glad to have a ride along. Basically some of the, I mean, you had full police powers. So you carried a gun, you had arrest powers. 
Um, but it helps a lot to have someone like that, but you gotta be trained. Jacksonville is one of the top top programs in the state. You go through that. It's like a six or eight month program that you do every week and sometimes at least a couple Saturdays a month that you go to. It's basically a, a condensed academy, what it is. So and that would help. I mean, you could always get a couple people on like that that would kind of do people that are more than happy to go out and ride along with the deputy and you know, give them a hand, just somebody to watch the six, you know. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Well, I would get more information right now, and I'm thinking you're probably going to stay between 50 and 60,000 for the person. Because you're going to have to have a chief, and then you're going to have to have a, probably an officer, a couple, mm -hmm. two, a couple of you know, what would you call them? You're going to have a chief, you have a police chief, you have a full time officer, and then you'd have some part timers. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you could always do reserve officers to help fill in with something like that. As long as you're trying. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Mr. Brad Rocky? Uh, the only thing comment that was on Facebook was uh, Christina Luceri was uh, contacting the County Road Commission multiple times about the hill on party between the bridge and the Marble Road. Hopefully that will be fixed soon. I think what really needs to happen is I think the township needs to be contacted. The township yeah. is the one that's got the if they approve for that to be done, because they have to spend their road money on that on that project. So it's the basically it's the township that's the one that's because I talked to the guy in the county. He said we want to we want to go through there. We want to cut down the big trees that are right on the edge of the road. Get them out of there. We want to do a full repave, reconstruct up in there. Yeah. Wow. But they got to have funds from the township, and they'll pay for it. Right. Okay, hey, anybody for adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn at 9 35. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Folks say aye. 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 A